Hi, Jire. Hey, hi, Spirits. How's it going? <laughs> Not bad. How are you doing? You ready for some Final Fantasy Legend 2 here? Of course I am. I've been waiting all night for this. So in reality, even though this says Final Fantasy, this is actually a saga game. So this is continuing the saga block. Um, Final Fantasy Legend was the name that they slapped on for the saga series when it came from Japan to the US. And they were really going for a series name that people kind of knew about. So they were kind of trying to sell more copies of that. But this is kind of the uh, early days of the Saga series, so uh, Legend 1, 2, 3 came out, then uh, Romancing Saga, which I don't think we got a US port for for a long time, and then finally into uh, Saga and Frontier and later Unlimited Saga down the road. So you're saying that Moogle on the couch is inappropriate? Um, we might see some chocobos, but probably no Moogles. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're waiting on uh, incentives. Yeah, we're just waiting for those to get cut off there. So I have no idea what route I'm going to be doing right now. So there is four different main character types, human, esper, robot, or monster, each of which comes with a couple different variations. So depending on which one I get handed, I might be doing things differently here. Um, the names don't actually make any difference for the run itself. It's just a, whatever you want. And you could even name all the characters the same thing, which I've done plenty of practice runs on just in case that happens. So who's that Squaresoft? I haven't heard of that before. Yeah, that's an old company. Uh, this was actually, from the, at least the version I got, uh, published by Sunsoft. because oh, everything was published by Sunsoft back then. Yeah, so Square released the Legend series, and then many years later, like way later than you think, like late 90s, when you wouldn't expect a black and white Game Boy game to still be coming out, they uh, licensed it to Sunsoft to republish. And Sunsoft is a big Famicom uh, NES publisher back in the day. And so most carts of the Legend series are actually the Sunsoft variant because they produce like a billion copies of those. <laughs> so it's way easier to find those. Um, there's no difference between the two other than the, on the label on the front it says Sunsoft. So like there's no difference in value or anything like that. Sunsoft, yeah. Squaresoft, close enough. Yeah, they're, guys, they're uh, basically the same company. You guys ready to get started? Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. So today you are going to be rocking the Esper. Ooh. I'll be rocking an Esper. Can you write down the four character names so I can go ahead and put them in? They're yeah. during the run itself that I have to put in the character names. That's, correct. That's right. So let me get that right now. So we're going with the mutant. Yep, so uh, Esper is the Japanese name. <laughs> mutant is going to be what it sees on the screen itself. Um, exactly the same thing. They just translated it uh, a little bit differently, depending on what version of the game that you play. Right. I'm good to go, if you're okay. good to go. You got the List? names? You need the names now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell them to you also, if that's what you want. I just want to make sure I get all of the capitalization stuff correct. It should be on the bottom there. Okay, so Pipo Sabin, is that Jeb? Jeb, yeah. J E B. And Gels? And Gels, yep. All Got right. It. No Jeff. I'm surprised. I, I, I named all my characters Jeff just in case. Yeah. He, <laughs> he is fifth place, so he didn't quite make it. I had Jeff with capital letters, lowercase, mixed case. It was Jeff, 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 Jeff. But uh, I guess you guys are tired of Jeff these days. I'm surprised. I think well, he I th had his time to shine. Yeah, let's look. Okay. I, mean, I think there was enough Jeff Quest yesterday. Now there's no Jeff Legend. I mean, if you guys can or get it suggest for Earthbound, I'd be really appreciating that. So all the donations during this run should go for Jeff. Sounds saga good Jeff. Me. Jeff Saga. Sounds good to me. All right, and with that out of the way, let's get this run started <laughs> in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. And here we go, the Legend of the Magi, which I'm not really able to read because it's going really fast. So uh, let's just pick our Esper female, and I have Pipo as the top name on the list. So we're going to go ahead and use that for our main character. And uh, Pipo here has got kind of an interesting story with her dad. And this is kind of the main <laughs> theme of the game, relationships. So uh, early in her life, uh, dad gives her this mysterious magical item and then jumps out the window. Um, he evidently does this a lot because uh, people also has a variety of other relatives that are all uh, dad's daughters here. And so uh, many years later, you know, we're growing up and we're like, hey, what happened to that dad guy that used to hang around the house all the time? We haven't seen him for a while. Let's go find out what happened. And so we're going to go to school. Uh, Mr. S is our teacher here. It's sensei in the Japanese version, so they abbreviated it Mr. S here. And this is where I get to pick my other three characters. So we've got uh, a variety of choices again, just human, esper, robot, and monster. And because we did the esper here, I'm going to pick uh, two monsters and a robot for the remainder. Um, that's the 
party that I really like to do, so I'm glad the Esper party got picked. It's a really fun one overall because we get to eat a lot of meat, um, enjoy uh, the many things that are going to come out of that. Yeah. And uh, let's start with the Baby D twins here. So we have Sabin. Yeah, so uh, there's a pretty good chance he's not going to know what one of his party members is at the end of the game. I will definitely not know what the party <laughs> member is. Because he's just going to be randomly eating meat, and hopefully something good comes out of it. <laughs> we got Jeb, and we have our robot Gels. Since meat drops are pretty much random, and uh, towards the end of the game, they'll actually uh, they'll actually pick up. So it won't be uncommon to go every fight as a new monster. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. But first of all, we have to do the tutorial section. And uh, my first bit of tutorial is taking off all my equipment because we actually want our characters to die um, relatively quickly. Uh, that's actually a built-in mechanic for the game, which is that I'm going to be running from most of the random encounters. And uh, right now we're really slow, but uh, I just put on an item to my robot to make him a little bit faster. And if you've got a dead character in your party, it treats it as if you've got 100 agility. So you <laughs> can't run there, so hopefully this gang is going to beat up Pippo. Uh, Poor there Pippo. There she goes. And there's our main character. <laughs> yeah, main character's dead now, game's over, but uh, we'll run away now. Um, you'll see this like uh, Mystic Quest a little bit later on. You do get resurrected automatically, so there is no uh, life spell outside of battle that you need to use. She's going to come back to life with one HP, so if we get another can't run, going to have to get her killed off again. I love this game where if you actually fail to run, they actually take the time to tell you that everyone else in your party is doing nothing. Yep. Like, did nothing, yeah, did we're just, nothing. we're just standing around here. <laughs> They're, like, confused on what to do. I mean, they're having a chat watching people get beaten up there. It's like, mm, probably should jump in there. It's like, no, maybe you should, no. We're all kind of lazy right now. But over time, though, we'll get a lot faster, and these can't runs are going to disappear. It's really only, like, the first 15, 20 minutes of the game where I have that problem. Yeah, the can't runs will turn into back attacks. <laughs> That'll be, hopefully, <laughs> something we get a skill to prevent. Um, but there is a lot of RNG in terms of my party evolution. So my Esper is going to randomly learn skills throughout the game. Um, our monsters are going to randomly evolve based on what monster meat they eat. So I'm going to have a very different party almost every time I play this. Mr. S is so nice to have right here because he just dissolves everything away. In He's one wonderfully overpowered. So here's our first mini, mini, mini boss, Baby Worm. Uh, he's just a regular monster that we'll see in a couple worlds, but right here he's blocking the exit to the cave. So this is the end Dissolve of the tutorial dead. dungeon. <laughs> uh, no meat. So we're going to have to go meatless here for uh, the start of the cave. Wait until I get uh, Mr. S out of my party before I get uh, the uh, runs started here again. So you're only fighting the one enemy groups because it's nice and quick and easy to dissolve? Yeah, it's faster to do that than to get a can't run on him. So uh, see you later, Mr. S. He's going to actually block the cave so you can never go home again. It's really <laughs> tragic. But get out of here. The nice thing <laughs> is that, hey, there's this dad guy. Well, let's uh, chase after him. And oh, no, we're very distracted, so let's go shopping instead. He saw a slime up there like, eh, I'm yeah, not going up there. Yeah, it's like, you know, we got better <laughs> things to do. So let's go ahead and sell off that gear and buy one, two, three, four, and five bows. I'm going to put all the bows on my robot because my robot wants to feel pretty. <laughs> the robot uh, actually Wait. has a really interesting uh, way of evolution, which is that there is no levels or experience ports or anything at all in this game. And instead, each of the four character types is going to advance themselves differently. The robot gets stronger by equipping items. And you'll see me put pretty much every agility-based item in the game on this robot. Which is not something I think the designers really tested. <laughs> so uh, we'll get very, very fast. I'll also use an agility-based weapon on him, which will uh, seriously break most of the game. Um, but the nice thing about it overall is just I can get rid of all these random encounters. You can see the encounter rate of this game is pretty high. And how do uh, everyone else in your party uh, level up? Let's talk about that. So uh, our Esper here in the front, she is going to get uh, random stack growth. We've seen one time already, I think, that she got an HP gain. Uh, basically, every time yeah. we win a battle, which is not going to be very often, we're going to get uh, some random chances of stack growth. And she also has a 25% or so chance of learning skills. So skills are a big list of things that monsters are going to have associated with them. The higher level the monster is, the more skills in the list. And I get one at random sometimes. Um, <laughs> I can only hold four, and I can't prevent it from overwriting the last one once I'm full. So I'll just be losing and gaining skills all the time. It's about as random as meat. <laughs> it is also very random. Uh, so meat is how monsters evolve. Monsters get no normal evolution, so they are fixed stats and fixed skills based on what type they are. But as you eat other monsters, you might or might not become stronger depending on what meat you ate. <laughs> it's a really complicated process. Have you ever done like Shin Megami Tensei or other games that have these gigantic fusion charts? This is the same thing in here Final Fantasy Legend 2. So without the internet, Going to uh, eat meat is actually rather tricky. I don't know how they expected people to kind of figure it out back in the day. 
So yeah, you got two monsters. So one, you're just going to be randomly whatever you eat. The other one, you actually have a plan for. Yeah, the other one, I've got a plan based on the bosses. So I'll, I'll have to get certain meat drops in the game, which will be... Uh, That'll be a big RNG thing later on. Now, I just picked up a whip, which is an agility-based item. So when I put that on my robot, he's going to get four additional speed, 18 additional hit points. And you'll kind of see that kind of throughout the game, where I just dump more and more equipment on him to make him more, more quick. Uh, but, but right now, we don't have a fifth party member, because Mr. S left. So I mentioned before that if you had a dead party member, 100 agility. Same thing if you don't have a guest. So we right now have super fast uh, party compared to the enemies. So you're basically not dragging another person around behind you. Yeah, basically, that's the... <laughs> The thing that slows you down is having to just like carry them. They're, the, they're so lazy, you have to pick them up and move them yourself. <laughs> Same concept with their corpse, you know? It's yeah. like, oh, they're, we gotta drag their corpse, so we must be faster because <laughs> there's less weight or walk. I don't know. Yeah. Makes sense. All right, so I'm coming to the end of this uh, dungeon here, which is the Relic of the Ancient Gods. This is not really a tutorial dungeon, but it's the first time that you don't have a guest NPC, so it's a relatively short one. Here we go, the laziest guards in the world. They've been hired to guard these three treasure chests, and they do take the contents out when I come and approach them, but uh, they don't take them very far. They made it all the way across this hallway here. So uh, now we can go and get them. So and you think there's not five of them, so they're, they're actually moving pretty slow. <laughs> Let's go ahead and grab a Power Magi, a Speed Magi, and a Mana Magi. Magi are the main quest item slash buffs in this game, so I could actually put those on to buff my stats, but let's touch these guards right here for just a second. They worked really hard, so now they're really tuckered out taking a nap there on the grass. It's a lot of running. I mean, those are probably very heavy looking treasure chests, so I can yeah. imagine that they need a rest after that 15-foot uh, <coughs> journey that they took. You got time for a couple donations? Go right ahead, Mr. Big Fun Balls. Cool. So we got a donation from Soldier Hawk. Thanks to everyone at RPG LB for a wonderful event and supporting a great cause. I had to donate to support my favorite streamer and speedrunner, Jire for being such an awesome, entertaining guy, and for being our bulwark against the evils of banana smuggling. <laughs> Thank you, Jire. This donation goes to your choice. Thank you very much, Soldier Hawk. Um, Bip, do you have a character name that you'd like to be named after Jeff? We should name... Uh, there's one character left over in my game. He's not getting any love after Boom Shakalaka, so... Is that Gloria? Yeah. Let's name Gloria Jeff. Sounds good. <laughs> um, Squeeze in one more here. Hey everyone, here's my second donation for the event. I recently found Jire's past runs at other marathons. I've been watching a stream ever since. Watching these games that I played as a kid is amazing, and the commentary that Jire adds in every run is even better. Jire doesn't take donations to himself, so this is to show how much I appreciate his runs. This goes to Runner's Choice also. All right, some more Jeff love. Jeff Quest. So is there a, a maximum amount of items the uh, robot can equip? There is a limit to the number of things you can have in your inventory there, so he's actually full right now. So he starts with a skill called uh, Paralysis Poison Immunity, and I filled him up with uh, bows and that whip that we just got there earlier. Now I have uh, Key in the party. Key is the slowest character in the entire game, so we might get some more cant runs here, even though I just buffed my robot to agility by like 20. <laughs> She's dragging us down. So the backstory about Key here is that uh, Basically, there is a whole bunch of discrete worlds that Final Fantasy Legend 2 is going to be organized around, and she's kind of the guardian of the shrine here in our home world. So she's kind of our main NPC. We need to go solve her problem, and then we'll say goodbye to her, find the next person's problem, go solve that. We don't ever get any thanks, but you know, we're we're saving the world one a person at a time. So what world are we in now? Uh, so this is our home world right here. We're right now in a place called Ashura's base. Ashura is one of the gods that's trying to take over the universe using the power of the Magi. And uh, Ashura's got a zombie dance party thing going on right now, so I need to dodge all these zombies. They move really fast. You'd expect zombies to be kind of slow and shuffling, but no, they move like twice as fast as your character does. And uh, if you touch them, it causes an extra random encounter to happen. They're just dancing. I mean, they're so lively, but you know what? I don't want those random encounters. We're going to try to avoid them as much as we can. There's a few spots which are really tight for the corridors. There's our first camp run. Thanks, Key. I like to say that Key's got this gigantic collection of antique bricks she carries around everywhere. That's why she's so slow. But uh, once we get her out of the party, we'll be able to run again. She probably ate the bricks. She probably got something indigestion. You know, I mean, something in her bloodstream. Who knows? There's no way to tell with the, some of these characters. There we go, we got it out of that Asagura battle. Now that our front character is pretty damaged, it'll be easier to run in the future. Just need a one HP hit to knock him out. Also, I changed to the cow snake here just so you can enjoy the monster sprite. <laughs> the cow snake. There, I, I just come up with names for these things because it's hard to tell yeah. what they really intended. You have for some to because these... half these things don't make sense. I mean, it's going to get even more ridiculous later in the game. Or at least I hope so. We might see some really boring ones, but uh, there's a lot of very good uh, monster families that we can have throughout here. 
This is a really tight quarter here. This looks like, like we're going to need some good movement by these zombies. The one nice thing about the, all the can't runs is you got to do this really rocking battle music that plays throughout the game. There is a very good soundtrack overall for Final Fantasy Legend 2 and Legend 3, which we're going to be hearing next. Fire ever busy Bic over there, <laughs> working hard this morning. I can't believe he's hosting me and then immediately turning around and playing a really good game. Just after commentating the run before. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta show the love for Saga. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Saga's a series that, at least in the US, didn't get a lot of recognition. It no. was always the side series. Um, Final Fantasy Legend 2, I believe, is the most popular of the original sagas in Japan. Legend 3 for the US, but... Uh, they all are really charming in their own special, unique ways. How stupid of you to come, Key. All right, so here's Rhinoceros. He's uh, a sure as flunky that uh, got left behind, so we're going to go ahead, thunder him. Thunder and hammer do about the same damage, but thunder never misses, so why would you ever do anything else? Poor Saban. All right, there we go. Rhino died, and uh, still no Man meat, up. but uh, it really was a load-bearing Rhinoceros, so now the entire tower is collapsing around us. Banzai! And you got to stop to open the chests while, I, you, I mean, while why, it's exploding. Why not? I mean, they're valuable. So we'll go ahead and pick up three more Magi there. And then finally, just seconds later, the tower does collapse, so we made it out there just in time. And takes out half of the mountains around it. <laughs> there we go. We made it up there, so finally, goodbye, Key. Take your bricks with you, so we'll finally be able to run again, and we'll head on to our next new world. So this is the world between worlds, this little crystal area here. And so all the worlds are joined together by these beanstalk things. I think they're like Yggdrasil roots or something, but I call them beanstalks. We got time for a couple more? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. So we got a donation from Skeev Twitch, Hey Gyre, and the rest of the room. Really dig your speed runs for both Final Fantasy 1 and FFL 2. I want to give my support for all that you and RPG Limit Break does. $50 for runner's choice. Jeff Bound for the win. <laughs> Thank Hopefully you, Steve. you can get teleport on your Esper. <laughs> One I, in 128 chance that you get this really good skill. That's right. I've been impacted by a bipolar disorder as a family member suffers from that affliction, and supporting NAMI will help support those impacted with mental health issues. Indeed, thank you very much. So right here, the trick of this world is you can't see where you're going, and there's these trap tiles that push you really hard that you can't actually overcome, but I know where to go, and uh, it turns out to be this tower here down, hidden down the south. You'll see me skip like pretty much all the towns and all these side areas throughout the game. Um, as long as I don't need to go shopping, which is only a couple of times throughout here, I can mostly get away without having to do a lot of the NPC interaction that you have uh, kind of expected. Like there is a few spots where you're just forced to talk to people and you're really expected, because there's no hints in the game, just talk to everybody all the time to figure it out. Yeah, they, get, they get better later on about kind of hinting you, hey, why don't you go talk to this person to go start the quest? But uh, Legend 1 Legend 2 are a little bit hard to figure out in the, back in the day. Yeah, I don't think anyone would be happy to see a cow snake running through the town either. I mean, maybe they love cow snakes. It's hard to tell about these uh, strange universes that we go and explore here. Yeah. Now, which world is this? This is the desert world? Yeah, this is Ashura's home world. So Ashura's he world. was invading our world. And uh, now we're going invading his world back. So we got the saber here. This is our first really good weapon for the robot. It's really powerful. <laughs> it's an agility-based weapon. Uh, we didn't have the starter weapon for agility. That's only in the human route that I can get that. Uh, but basically, most moves in the game have a multiplier and a base stat. So the multiplier, um, case of the saber is 9x your agility score. And since we've been buffing agility a lot, that means we're going to do a whole bunch of damage here to this woodman. Assuming I remember to use the saber in battle, which I often forget to, so let's do this slowly. Looks like he's flexing a little bit. What do you think? That uh, could be a little bit of a flex there. <laughs> I mean, I think Metaflex is better than that, so I'm going to... Uh, he's an early enemy, you know? What can you expect? I'm going to expect some, I'm gonna expect some higher tier stuff later on. And uh, we oh, pick up this yeah. mask guy. <laughs> mask looks exactly like our dad, but he wears a mask, so it can't be our dad. So we're going to call him Mask instead. Also, he doesn't have any stuff until he just finds it laying there on the floor. So now Mask is going to fight along with us. You gotta watch the sprites, the enemy sprites, like their face, like look at that I fish, don't know he just what's... looks confuzzled. I mean, he's living in a desert, that's not a good place for a fish, I'm sure he's really not happy here. <laughs> and there's Dancing Zombie, he's always having a good time. <laughs> he looks like he's a little bit tired out from all that dancing earlier, but uh, the flower is really upset about something. So he got stuck dancing with a partner that won't stop dancing. I've been skipping most of the treasure chests because 
the uh, rate at which money increases is very dramatic. It like doubles between worlds for what an item is worth. So until you get close to, to where you need to do shopping, you want to put off uh, collecting things as much as possible. Also, we got a can't run because uh, Mask, aka Dad, is a little bit slow. He's not nearly as bad as Key or Mr. S will be, so uh, usually we don't see too many of those. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of shopping you do in this game. Usually it's just a handful of weapons and and some healing things towards the end. Yeah, I mean, you try to reduce going to town as much as possible just because you have to walk all the way across town to get to where the shops are. And a lot of equipment you get that's decent is actually not too far off the path, so... Yeah, I got the magic potion there. I'm going to use that later for my Esper. And we're going to get set here for our first real boss of the game. This is Ashura, one of the gods trying to take over the universe, and he has a variety of different roles. Uh, Legend 1, he's a pretty important character. He's the guardian of the tower. That's kind of the central thing for the game. Legend 2 here, he's a pretty major boss. He's doing good. He's got an army and all that. Legend 3, uh, Bix going to show he's a pretty big joke. Uh, he's like a mini boss <laughs> on the way to more important bosses. He literally gets more insignificant as the as the series goes on. Spoiling my game, man. <laughs> Bet you in Romantic Saga he's a random encounter. Yeah. I'm just like foreshadowing <laughs> now. Flame there, that's the one move we didn't want to see. Most bosses have a I win move. So uh, he killed uh, pretty much the entire party except for Mask here. So uh, we're going to reset and try that one again. Yeah, he's going to say before every, every major god because they all have the one like I win button. Yeah, it's like a 90, 95% chance of winning. So I'm sure for the marathon, we're going to die on like every single of the bosses. You don't want to actually die. Um, there is a retry mechanic for this game, but it cost me like a minute and a half. So it's much faster to save and reload. It doesn't help that you go in the fight with everyone at one health. Yeah, I mean, they died in one hit anyway. Like, he's doing 450 <laughs> yeah, damage, know. and we got 45 hit points. <laughs> I blame not getting enough meat. You haven't got enough protein in your diet to grow up. There's the flame again. Let's see if uh, Robot lives. Yep, we're down to just mask again. This time, though, we did have some more rounds beforehand. Well, let's try it a third time. 95%. <laughs> 100% of the time, it works pretty much never. So let's go and take a Shura down. Hopefully we don't get this problem on the last boss, which is a much longer fight. That's the one that's a little bit more random, probably about a 75% chance of killing the last boss. But again, you just save beforehand. It's a very forgiving game for that regard. I mostly wanted to use six arms or just like a random attack against my front three meat shields. I've got three people in the front of the party. So as long as he doesn't flame, we're usually pretty good. Mind if I throw a few donations in? Yeah, go right ahead. Cool. So we got. I'm gonna butcher his name, but he knows he's my boy. We got a hundred dollars <laughs> from Jano. He, uh, <laughs> Jano again, just wanted to enter the raffle for the prize I'm offering. <laughs> it's a nice prize, and I wouldn't mind keeping it. A reminder everybody that uh, Kingdom Hearts incentives aren't met yet, so we can show a little love to that for sure. We got uh, thirty dollars from Monkey Breath. Hey, Jire, good luck. And just say no to bananas. Thank you very much, Monkey Breath. I want one more. $25 from Lorvanos. Good luck, Jire. Love what RPG Limit Break is doing for Nami, and good luck on Watch Your Meat first try. And thanks to Lorvanos as well. So I just uh, found out this terrible news that Key is deathly ill, and for some reason we're actually going to go save her. So uh, we need to get a mycorrhizing device. So sure has shrunk his minions down to a really tiny size and used them to invade Key's bloodstream. And uh, Key's helper fairy told us the mycorrhizing device is the only way to fix her. Um, Key was just passed out there on the ground, that's why we didn't talk to her. I think they should at least put her in a bed or something, it's kind of rude. Well, she's passed out, you know, she's comfortable where yeah. she was. Hopefully she's got, got some blankets or something, it looks really cold on the floor. <laughs> so, uh, Giant's World here is going to be our third world to get to, so we just left our home world. Going to head back over to Ashura's world, and once you've beaten worlds, there's these little bridges that open up, so you don't have to go into the world itself to go and cross over to the next one. So many beanstalks. And here we go, down to Giant's World. Now, when I'm moving like this, it's pushing me, and I'm holding the button at the same time, so I move twice as fast. You can actually just let go of the D-pad, and it'll just slide down really slowly. Yeah, there's multiple slides in the game that do that. does that, right? But yeah, here in Giant's World, let's go and uh, meet up with this guy, Dad, again. And uh, <laughs> Dad, who we just were not with two minutes ago, I swear this was a different person, um, decides to just throw a magic ice and, throw, and run away, because he's a little bit shy. I mean, he hasn't seen his daughter in, like, seven years, and uh, he's kind of having some trouble building that relationship back up again. Well, if he would have closed the window, he wouldn't have gone away. It's your I fault mean, for leaving the window open when you went to bed. I mean, we'll try to do better next time, but we don't do a lot of sleeping in this game. You'll see that there is uh, no trips to the inn, actually, in the entire run. 
Now here's one of these areas where uh, you have to talk to NPCs. So you talk to this guy behind the counter. He has a different speech in front. I don't know how you're supposed to figure this out. Um, <laughs> and then you go down to uh, Johnny at the bar who has a second bit of the quest that you need to open up. So there's this secret passageway, secret quote unquote, sitting on the overworld. You can actually see it. It's going to be colored a little bit differently than the normal tiles, but it doesn't do anything until you talk to Johnny and get the, this helpful piece of advice. You cannot enter. Why? I don't know. No. The game's just going to tell you no. There's a, yeah. It just says, cannot enter. Cannot it's like enter. no details at all. No. So, here we go. So, now we've been told that there's a differently colored spot and we get in there. And Johnny asks if you think he's a giant, which we'll say yes. doesn't matter if you say <laughs> yes or no. It's just a little bit faster to say yes to it. And the backstory here is that um, if you say no... I'll give you another clue. clue. <laughs> and that's all he says. So, like, there's no real, no real story there. But uh, what I've kind of inferred is that there are no giants in the world. So, even though there's a giant's village... There is like no giants walking around, so where are they? Well, they have this shrink technology. Maybe that's how they're blending into human society, and so Johnny's really sensitive about the subject being brought up. Uh, but he brings it up himself, so maybe my theory <laughs> is wrong. I wonder where this is. There's that secret passageway. So if you notice the secret passageway early on, you're just like banging your head in there wondering like, why can't I get up here? But uh, once you're up in the plateau, I'm going to go ahead down to these two houses that I need to uh, borrow some things from. And we're going to go and collect uh, magi here and then the mycorrhizing device. 355 damage. Still no meat though. Like we are, we are really kind of getting hungry here. So what's the point of collecting all of this magi? So you need magi to advance in the storyline. So there is a bunch of locked doors which are going to check your magi count to determine whether or not you can progress. And you have to get every single magi to advance on. So there's no way to really miss things. Um, you'll pretty quickly run into a door and say you uh, cannot unlock this door. It just says locked. Uh, again, it doesn't really explain anything about the magi. <laughs> but uh, you'll figure out that you've need to go back and since it's only one world to explore like right there it's a locked door check that check to see did I get the two magi like 10 uh, steps away yeah how many magi are there in the game um dad claims there are 77 but we'll see if he is uh, telling the truth about that one and sometimes the encounter rate is fun the encounter rate's uh, pretty uh, high in this game. Now, it is actually predictable. Before the stream uh, went live on this, I went and walked around to make sure I did not know what encounters were coming <laughs> up. This particular category I'm playing, which is glitchless, requires, at least for the US uh, runners, that you do no encounter manipulation or meat drop manipulation or anything else in the game. And so we just start off by walking around, making sure the RNG is all nice and scrambled up. <laughs> And so, um, in Japan, where there's more Saga 2 runners, they actually have two different variants, Glitchless with encounter manipulation and Glitchless without. And the difference is like eight minutes, so it's not really a yeah. huge thing between the two of them. So what do you mean by repeats? Like, you're going to see the same patterns again after a while? You'll notice that the number of steps between encounters is something that's predictable. And it does advance even if you're in towns or things. So if you know an encounter is going to come up like two steps outside of town, you can walk around a little bit, and then that encounter will be skipped. And so that's how you save a little bit of time by not having to get into those encounters. You can also control where meat drops happen, and that lets you uh, sometimes skip some of the uh, time spent farming that I will otherwise have to do. So you started out this game uh, like uh, setting it up as like a random encounter, so you, you know, completely random, so you don't know where they're going to appear. Um, as you start to notice patterns, are you gonna are you gonna use that if you see a pattern coming, or are you gonna completely avoid that? No, I just charge straight ahead. So you'll notice that I don't take any like extra weird steps outside of town. So like I might take steps where I'm accidentally holding a D-pad direction going through a doorway, <laughs> but that's really it. All right, so let's go ahead. I think we've already drank in our magic potion. No, we didn't. So there we go. Let's give that to our Esper. Now we're going to go ahead and put our robot in charge of our party, because he's pretty cool. You might recognize this guy from the banner for uh, RPG Limit Break. <laughs> so we got to fix her, so... That's right, so we're going to go dive in. inside of Key's body here. And uh, this is supposed to be blood. They originally had a black and white game. This is for the Brick Game Boy, uh, which technically is green shades. If you ever have one of those classic classic Game Boys. Oh, yeah. uh, it wasn't purely black and white correctly because they just didn't have the technology for it. The Game Boy Micro and all the re-releases later on, the, the shrunk down ones, um, did have a, like a stronger black for it. But I'm playing on the GameCube player right now. And one of the nice things about it is that it has color palettes. 
Um, you get a choice of a couple of different variations. I picked the one that's the least eye burning. Um, since the game designers did not pick what the colors are, they sometimes have really bad combinations. Yeah. And there's another device called the Super Game Boy that sometimes people use. Um, the Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo has like 32 palettes instead of the four the Game Boy player has, and some of them are pretty good. But uh, the Super Game Boy plays uh, games a little bit too fast. So for speed running, it's not as fun. You have to go and adjust your time later on. Your splits don't always have accuracy on them. So I go for like the most accurate timing method. This is playing exactly the same speed as the original Game Boy did. Feels like she uh, ate a few of my Magi. That might be what's making her sick. I mean, Key's eating some really strange things. Like I know, like she ate a terrorist. Terrorists and horses yeah. and entire octopuses. <laughs> and samurai and rhinoceroses. I can understand why she's not feeling very well right now. Yeah, I think it should be in the stomach, not the bloodstream. I'd have an upset stomach after eating, you know, an octopus, a terrorist, and an amoeba at the same time. Oh, we'll and a woodman. We'll go to the stomach eventually, but uh, there's six areas I need to clear the magi out of. Uh, so I'm <laughs> starting with the two hands here. we got the stomach, heart, and the two feet left to do. And once we clear these six areas out, then I'll go ahead and fight the boss here for this uh, little zone. Yeah, you look, you can tell it's kind of a hand. You know, it has the five fingers. It loosely looks like a body if you, if you look at it. I like, mean, here's you, the arm If right you zoom here. this out, this is a stick figure outline of, a, of Key's body. So yeah. you can kind of see where I'm navigating around. Yeah, you're, you're at the shoulder now, and now you're going down towards the, uh, down the body. Yeah, we're going to the heart next. So you can, you can kind of get a sense of it. The hands and feet, they've got these branching paths. The stomach and heart, though, they're linear. I just walk in here and then follow the path along until I get reach where the magi are. And for a casual player who you know just played this game back in the day, this is going way faster just because I'm not fighting all this stuff. Yeah. Normally you try to do all these fights, it takes a long time, and uh, Legend 2 has a system where you have a limited number of uses of items. So I get a sword, 20 swings, then it breaks. I get a shield, 15 times I can block with it, then it breaks. And so you're constantly having to go back and restock your supplies, you go to the inn and get your monster skills refill and all that so you might be able to do one of these areas maybe two and then you have to go back out and so that's what a lot of the time savings for the speedrun is plus the fact that i can really stomp the bosses which um this is mostly creative strats because it's the glitchless runs so you have to figure out how to build up a really strong party despite the fact that i'm not fighting anything and there's no leveling and she eats rocks well that too left foot all right left foot time Mind if we uh, rock some donations right now? This is a great time. Speaking for of rock, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we got ten dollars from. I'm just gonna call this person Lassie. I love watching <laughs> Jire during these marathons because he's so informative and engaging. I played so much Final Fantasy Legends when I was younger, but I never beat any. I always love my robots and aliens. Good luck on the run. We right. got uh, six dollars and sixty-six cents from Tumble Miss. This is my second donation, and I had to pop in for Jire. When's the Final Fantasy speed run? <laughs> As Jaya requested, this donation is going for more Jeff. Uh, let's see here. We got $25 from IGB. I really hope this event has or gets a lot more visibility. Great job, staff, runners, and greetings from Spain. Oh, one more. $25 from Excalibur. Got Final Fantasy Legend 2 when I was eight years old. Kept playing through it my entire childhood and finally beating it nine years later. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be faster than that today. Seven years probably in this dungeon. Uh, makes me very happy to see it getting wrecked in a marathon and for such a good cause. Thank you very much. And thank thank you, you everybody that's donating. It's really appreciated throughout the entire week. All these donations do make a very big difference. And I love to see that number in that upper right hand corner go up. We're going for 100,000, maybe more, depending on how generous you guys are over the next couple of days. Yeah, Jeff demands it. <laughs> I do. I do demand it. <laughs> Back. So right here, we're going up through the stomach. This is where I would expect most of the indigestion to be happening, but uh, evidently she's eaten so many uh, bad things that <laughs> her entire body is not feeling well right now. She ate a son with hands. I mean, some of these are kind of biological looking, except for like the hands and feet and the smiley faces. I mean, maybe like if you have a high enough power microscope, you could actually see that in real cells or something. I've yeah, I know. Are you a doctor? No. no. This must be the stomach. Yeah, there it is, finishing off. squeeze one more in here. Uh, $25 from Twali Amalar. Hey, Jire. Good luck on the run and on stopping that dastardly banana smuggling operation. Thank you very much, Twali. Donation goes towards good taste for FFL3. The demon Chocobo's influence must be resisted. What? <laughs> Agreed. Someone has sense out there. Not me. I'm all for this demon Chocobo <laughs> guy. 
Post your demon chocobos, by the way, if you got those in chat. So he's almost done. Uh. Yeah, we just collected the last of these six mini magi here. We're heading up to the head to go finish off uh, Key's little uh, problem. So once we've uh, done our invasive <laughs> robot surgery, she's going to feel much better. It's a much more than a little problem. <laughs> so yeah, there's uh, bananas kind of plays a small role in this game. Yeah, there might be some bananas later on, but we're not going to spoil anything about that. Let's just say eat your fruits and veggies. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> So up here at the head is where a boss is going to be. And this is a boss that's a random number of copies between four and eight. I've only been doing single monster encounters. And so what I've got is uh, hopefully everybody in the back of the party is going to cast a lot of fire spells, uh, which are multi-target. My robot can tank one hit before dying. So he might uh, be able to block something. And then the other move that these fetishites have is Six. called tie-up, which is going to be... Uh, a paralysis, but the robot's immune to that. So again, I'm hoping that he gets targeted mostly. So there's now five of them left. So yeah, most of these bosses that aren't like gods usually uh, can come between, can, can be several in a group. And uh, some of the encounters, he's, if he sees a lot, he's just gonna reset. It's like not a point in even trying. We got him. Ooh, we got, we got we a meat. We got some vasocyte meat. Uh, what do we get? What do we get? A worm. We got, we got a worm now. That might not have been a good upgrade, but you know what? Wait, he's still a worm. We got a dragon and a. Uh, I mean, he's kind <laughs> of. They're, they're similar, okay. I'll admit that. <laughs> <laughs> we got a cow worm and a worm. Let's go swap these magi because I want to have them differently now. And where is my power? There it is. Good. <laughs> and uh, you're supposed to have a conversation with Key, but if you're fast enough, you can get away before she bores you. But it's uh, <laughs> not too hard. You hold down the button while you're in that fade out transition. That's why the victory music keeps playing while I'm walking down there like that. Just cuts out like a seven second dialogue section. I love how when you're going up and down, the body is like, the tail is wiggling, but the head's not moving. I mean, he's kind of wiggling. It's just not quite the same as my cow snake, though. I might like the cow snake a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he might be having some mood swings here. It's, it's hard to tell. <laughs> And with that, we've finished our home world. Again, we still can't go home because Mr. S is blocking the cave. He's just, just standing there with his arms crossed. Well, he doesn't really have arms, but whatever the equivalent of arms that that pile of goo has, they're crossed. So are we done with Key now? I hope so. Is she going to get into more trouble? We're just heading on to our next new world, which is going to be Apollo's world here. Apollo is the second of the gods that we're going to meet. And uh, he's a big old meanie. <laughs> Paul, though, does uh, have wonderful hair. He reminds me very much oh, of, yeah. of Bic. Just kind of the hair blowing there in the blowing breeze. Blowing in the wind, inside. <laughs> <laughs> so you. are you going to every world? Or are you able to skip worlds? Uh, I will be going to every world in this game. Okay. Um, there is a glitched route, which is very different than this. It's about 40 minutes long. No real gameplay because it's entirely manipulated. Look um, at that hair. Look at that. That is Bic in person. If you've ever met Bic, that's just exactly like him. Yeah, his hair is going Including white. Including the cape. Yeah, his hair is going white, so it's obviously him. Now, Paul, Paul here <laughs> is, is though. Yeah, so. Paul here basically wasting my time telling me a riddle, which is actually not quite correct, because while he tells you the three dungeon locations, they're in the wrong order. So I need to go to this underwater volcano here first. Uh, we get to continue listening to Apollo's music for a little while. Underwater volcano is correct. Yeah, let's go and murder this horse. I just want to eat some meat. I'm really hungry here. No, nope. nope. we learned how to be weak to ice. <laughs> so yeah, you'll notice that skill is the X and then ice. That means she learned a weakness. If it was an O, like a circle, that means she got a strength. Yeah, there's the 32 skills overall, three of which are weaknesses. Weakness to fire, ice, and lightning. Uh, hopefully we'll get that uh, knocked off here eventually. I think that's her first skill, though. I haven't been really keeping track. I think track. so, too. I haven't seen any other. So we need to get a couple more skills before she uh, can get rid of that one. And much like the monster meat, there's a chance towards the end of the game where she'll be learning and losing spell skills every yeah. fight. Yeah, I said 25%, but that's like roughly. It's kind of adjusted by the difficulty of the monster. So early on, it's a lower chance of getting uh, skill meat drops, and later on, it's ridiculously high. Blue underwater volcano. Lava. Yeah, yeah, this is lava, not water. That's why I'm taking one damage in every step. And unlike Final Fantasy 1, I, I wish it worked like this. 
uh, there are random encounters in the lava. So Final Fantasy 1 had this great system where you took damage and then no random encounters, which is a great trade-off, but no. Uh, we are going to suffer through this volcano, just like most of the other areas of the game, for RNG for encounters. So when it comes to the skills, what skills are, are you looking for any skills to... Uh, Early to on, I really want the warning skill, which is going to make me immune to ambushes. We haven't seen ambushes because it's specific monsters that have the ability to ambush you, and they don't start until late in this world. And probably teleport if you could get it. Uh, there is a, a monster coming up at the end of this world that has a skill called teleport. It saves like five minutes in the speed run. One in 128 chance of it dropping. I saw you get it in practice. That was a little bit later, but yeah, we did uh, <laughs> did a practice run, uh, and I got teleport. It wasn't the first opportunity, so it would only save like a minute or two, but still, it's like, come on. Still one 120 chance for that one as well. Maple Man. Inside a volcano. There, there's some bad life choices by some of these monsters. So we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of magi there, including the important True Eye magi, which I need for this next dungeon. What's True Eye do? It will help me see things better. And uh, if this is what seeing things better is like, you don't want to know what seeing things worse is. Oh, yeah, this dungeon. That's right, coming up, after we go uh, sliding up our steps here, we're going to go visit the animated checkerboard Disco Floor of Doom. So if anyone likes checkers or chess, this is the perfect dungeon for you. This is my favorite back end of the game, by the way. You see well with True Eye. This is what you see. I guess it's going to do this the entire dungeon. <laughs> this is the floor of this dungeon. Looks kind of nice in blue. I like the green ones that you were doing earlier. Yeah, there's another one that's white and green, which I think is a little bit more distinctive. This one's kind of uh, less contrast because we're doing the blue palette. But yeah. uh, the blue palette makes Key's body look much better. <laughs> <laughs> we got time for a few donations? Yeah, stuff them in there. Right, we got $15 from our, our man Ethan, E-Mister. Hey, Go good. Gyre. Still need to get together with you for lunch one of these days. Good luck on the run, and thanks to all... The RPG Limit Break runners and staff are organizing a great event for an awesome cause. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Mister was the host for Final Fantasy 1 at EGDQ, by the way. He did a great job for that. He's the man. Uh, $10 from Sakatana. Hey, Jire, haven't been able to catch your streams lately, so it's awesome to see you around here. When is Final Fantasy Legend 1? Put this $10 wherever you like. All right, we got some more Jeffs then. And Legend 1. We will we will hopefully see some Legend 1. That was on backup for uh, RPG Limit Break by uh, Mr. Big Fun Balls. Mr. Saga himself. <laughs> Please. But uh, maybe next year, if we uh, don't get to do it this year, we can do like a race or something. Yeah. We got one dollar from Phoenix. This person says, the very last dollar in my bank account. <laughs> All for you, RPG LB. Thank you. Thank you. Always appreciate it. I just picked up a laser sword there, which is an upgrade. So we now have an 11x multiplier in our agility score. If you thought it was big before, now we've got an even faster robot with even uh, more damage. Also, um, that was originally called a lightsaber in Japanese, and for some reason they had to change it. Lightsaber was evidently taken in the U.S. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where would lightsaber be taken. Also, one other slight change was if you look at the original artwork for your dad, he is literally Indiana Jones. He's got a fedora, a whip. It's totally a ripoff of the Indiana Jones series. There might be some Indiana Jones references later on that are just kind of tucked in there, but uh, they kind of toned those down as well. Whenever you go down on this floor, it's so disturbing. <laughs> it does burn your eyes out after a while, I will admit that. It's more disorienting than anything else because it's not actually pushing you around. Unlike yeah. the staircases that you have throughout the game, this one's just a visual effect. So you kind of expect it to be moving with you, <laughs> but it just kind of fools with your mind for a little bit the first time or the 21st time that you see it. <laughs> Who ever thought this was a good idea? Oh, there are plenty more backgrounds in this game. They really did the backgrounds to uh, distinguish it from the uh, normal tile set that you can walk on. And that's because with the limited color palette of the Game Boy, you really need contrast in order to distinguish walls yeah. from walkable areas. And so animation was a great way of doing it. Backdoor. It just is a little bit different uh, when you have color. Now, this is the troll dungeon. Though there's two entrances. I took the backdoor entrance because the front door entrance, which is the one that you can see from the beanstalk and from the town, doesn't actually take you down to where the boss is. Ha ha, funny. So uh, you have to go and find out the backdoor entrance, which you probably are going to spend like an hour before you give up and then uh, go and ex discover this back section. This is where you get stuck in the front section. That tour is just the end of it. At least you get a chest out of it. You do get items, which is why it kind of fools you into thinking that it's the real part of the dungeon. Or the back end here. No, you don't get nothing. Yeah. All 
All right, so I'm going to go pick up a rocket. I have not gotten very much in the way of cash or items, so the rocket is my backup just in case so I can purchase more things for this upcoming shopping trip. We need to get some items for my robot. He's feeling lonely. We haven't uh, bought him anything for a little while. So is your monsters. They can't eat anything. They're probably but, starving. I mean, now. I'm pretty hungry, too. It's like, it's time for some meat. But alas, no meat here for a little while. Hopefully, in our next world, we will get a bunch of meat drops. Yeah, we're part of the seed where it gets step, step, step. <laughs> there is one spot in the encounter cycle where you'll get three encounters in four steps. That's the densest in the entire sequence. And then there's some which are like 25, 30 steps between encounters. So it does kind of balance out over the big cycle for the average number. But it does feel like a game which has a really high encounter rate, which is, I think a lot of early 90s RPGs kind of have that. Dragon yeah. Quest games have, so you know, high spirits, <laughs> really high encounter rates, especially some of the early NES ones. What are you talking about? I just watched a run yesterday that didn't have almost no random encounters. That must have been a very lucky run. <laughs> Here we go down the water slide of doom, and that's how you prevent it from backtracking here. Once you get down to the bottom floor, you're stuck. Which is also what happened to this girl named Lynn that we're <laughs> going to come across. Um, Lynn! Lynn is the last NPC, I think, that can get us a can't run in the entire uh, game here. So uh, hopefully these 20 steps, we need to escort her. She's not going to slow us down too much. And I think we made it, so go ahead and save here for the Dunedus battle. Dunedus... Uh, Eliminate. Murder Robot of Doom, but luckily we've got our own Murder Robot to take care of this guy. And this is where we're hoping for the teleport drop. Again, 1 in 128 chance. You get to this point in the run, everything's gone really well, no can't runs, and then you don't get teleported and you have to reset. But, <laughs> but you uh, got HP out of it. We did get something, so uh, we are worked back here to uh, Lynn's house, which for some reason Dad's hanging out here, and we have no <laughs> idea why, so we immediately go shopping again. We're, we're very nervous whenever we see Dad. We've got to run every time we see Dad. You flew out the window. At least we went out the door. <laughs> I mean, one or the other of us is just really kind of uh, having a hard time starting this conversation up. I'm going to go ahead and sell a bunch of junk. Just getting rid of all the stuff I picked up. I'm selling micro items. You have to sell quest items because otherwise you're just stuck in your inventory. <laughs> I'm right, gonna buy one headbutt and uh, this would be headbands, I think. <laughs> and two laser swords, because I really like laser swords. The agility. Stack right, look at that agility stack. It's up to 71 right there. Really ridiculously fast. And everything's agility based weapon, so it just, yeah. He does ridiculous damage. Now, if I'd gotten more monsters, I might have been able to afford three laser swords, which is your best outcome. But uh, with this route, I'm guaranteed two, I believe, with the rocket. And two means that I don't have to worry about Venus's flame attack coming up nearly as much. He's the next big, big boss that we're going to see in a couple of worlds. Venus is probably the hardest boss for casual play. A lot of people get really stuck on her for, like, just days. But Off have, to the next place. But we have a, a little bit of a side trip before that. We are going oh, yeah? to visit, and don't tell him I told you this, because he gets really upset about it. Dad's secret base. He's been working on this for seven years while he's been away from his daughter. And it's a really nice place. It put a how, lot of effort into it. How can he be building a secret place? He's been following you to every world. Well, I mean, but, time. before, like, after he went out the window, and before we found him again, he was evidently working on this base, which uh, has a really intricate security system. You go and uh, play a tune on the jukebox to get in. The heroic tune. Uh, and then he also has guards, so we immediately get thrown into jail. It's like, thanks, Dad. But uh, he does have at least uh, the courtesy to let us out here. But uh, you're, you're a worm. Just wiggle through the wall and through the bars. The rest of the party can't get out. But uh, he does give a really <laughs> stern glance over his shoulder before uh, saying, you know, what are you guys doing in my base here? And now uh, we're going to go find him, see if we can apologize. Like, I'm, I'm really sad about, uh, you know, bumming his day out here. You know, he considered this his own little uh, private area. But uh, we'll go and see if we can fix things up here. Or at least have a nice father-daughter chat, like one of the two. But, yeah, you know, just like, yeah, go right to bed. Just go to bed. Right. You look tired. Well, I was in a jail cell. I had time to sleep there. Now, this is not my fault at all, but somebody left the door open. Oops. And uh, Monster's gotten in and burned the base down. So, uh, sorry, Dad. <laughs> we still love you, Dad. <laughs> so I'm going to have some random encounters here. I've got four encounters which I can get skills on and two which I can get meat on. And uh, looking for meat on... Ideally manacore, but I would take ogre meat at this point. No, no, nothing. Nope, no. Nope. <laughs> this is a meatless run. All right, Dad's joining our party here. Nothing bad can ever happen again now that Dad's traveling together with oh, us. Oh yeah, Dad will save the day. 
doesn't even have his mass disguise on anymore. Manticore here, probably the best monster up to this point for meat. So if we can get a good meat drop here, I should have something decent for this next section. And there we got we Manticore go. meat. And so what do we turn into? Turtle! We got a turtle. <laughs> So, uh, the tur turtle's fit is great by Sprite, by the way. Just look how interested he is. Uh, turtle might be, be a here. little bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks so excited to be here. But uh, I got two more chances here to get um, <laughs> skill drops, which I'd love to get my Esper's skill list filled out so that we can start overriding some of these early uh, bad skills. No? Oh, bake. It was actually Obake, which is just literally <laughs> Japanese for monster. Why don't I squeeze in one donation here? We got uh, twenty dollars from Ben Show Sly. Says donation for Nami, but also to root for my favorite El Mangus for the Mystic Quest race. Sorry, Vic, you're not gonna win that one. <laughs> All right, and this he guy was standing <laughs> standing on the overall and somehow still surprised us. Uh, I this shot is... you with a bazooka <laughs> in the face. <laughs> I was surprised about the bazooka. I will get yeah, that. that. You probably saw the bazooka. You're like, ah! But uh, he was evidently the leader of the invasion force. I remember Lynn, who were with like 90 seconds ago. She's been kidnapped. She needs rescuing again. <laughs> so we have to go to Ninja Ambush World to go get her back. And as you might guess from the name, Ninja Ambush World, not a fun place to go on a vacation. Especially without the warning skill. Yeah, so there was a slight chance I would have gotten warning and been immune to ambushes. And that's really going to be important for Venus's role, which is the one after this one. That werewolf guy is, in fact, the, the monster that has a surprise skill that could ambush me. Now, uh, luckily, we do have an anti-ninja expert in our group. Dad has been fighting ninjas for years. He knows exactly <laughs> what to do, which is evidently blow himself up. So, um... <laughs> Dad is now dead, and oh, uh, no. he, he did at least get rid of the ninja for us, so that was really good. But well, you we know, rescued Lin again. We rescued Lin. We're all having a cry over here, but uh, except for Turtle, he just like, what's going on? Turns <laughs> out Dad's not even really good at anti ninja work, so uh, we have to kill Ninja ourselves. So uh, Dad sacrificed totally in vain. What if there was like six ninjas there? He just took out the first. Five. I mean, it might have been like a hundred ninjas, and like Ooh, that weapon. was, uh, you know, Dad took out ninety nine of them, but uh, I don't think so. So you just got the weapon skill up, weapon up skill or weapon resistance skill that is right. Yeah, let's see. Yep. Okay. So I have one more before I can get rid of things. But uh, weapon resistance means she's gonna take half damage. She doesn't have any equipment and uh, no hit points really, so she'll die anyway. But it's yeah. nice to have, nice to see. You know, it's nice to have. Uh, so we got some backstory there. Evidently, the reason Dad was at Lynn's house is because. Lin's dad was also in your dad's army, and he died tragically, probably against ninjas. Wait, your dad had an army? <laughs> he's the captain. Like, that's that's <laughs> why he's talking to him. And uh, dad felt so bad about Lin growing up without a, da a father that he abandoned his own daughter to go take care of Lin, which I don't know how this is helping in the long run. <laughs> but, uh, you know, eventually gonna... it gets to the end and someone gets help. We're still going to mourn dad nonetheless. Uh, you know, sad music still playing up until now because, you know, we've forgotten this dad guy already. New world. We got we got worlds to explore. We can't think about dad. And I did get worked back to Apollo's world there. That's where Lin's house is. So we have to go trek through the worlds again. So this is going to be dad's base. Ninja ambush world again. And then on to our next <laughs> new world, which is going to be Venus's world. Well, we do have our own ninja turtle in the party. We... I mean, there is a ninja, <laughs> official Ninja Turtle later on, so I don't want to claim that we have the, the Ninja Turtle, but uh, he might be. Well, there's four of them. We can have one. <laughs> and here we go, Venus's world. Of all the gods, I think Venus is doing the best job because she's actually got civilization here. I know, she has Everyone else has everything. got like a dirt hut and some farmers around there, and she's got like skyscrapers almost tall enough to have Escalators. Apollo fit inside. Yeah. Like, Escalators. You need a really tall building for Apollo to be able to stand inside of it. Also, speaking of Apollo, uh, remember that jerk there? Well, she's a jerk too, so she's going to tell us to go away and not help us at all with this Magi quest. We need to figure it out all by ourselves here. I We're think all the gods are pretty much jerks. I think we've come across that. They might be. They, there might be some uh, commonality there. And there's some people there, but we're not going to bother talking to them. They don't seem important quite now. We want to ride the escalators. That is a lot of fun. <laughs> They are going, uh, it kind of looks the opposite direction on the screen. It's really tricky on the eyes, so that you have to go on the correct one. It's an up escalator and a down escalator. Yeah. Um, and you can't go fast enough to go the wrong way on them. 
Those look like banana trees. Not yet for the bananas. Come on, hold it in. <laughs> Instead, we're going to go visit Dirty Village, which is just where the place where all of the beautiful people that got kicked out of uh, Venus's city have to go live, uh, including Leon, who is my least favorite NPC of the game. Leon, unfortunately, tells us this uh, terrible story about how he got kicked out for having a bad leg, and you have to talk to him or else you can't go into the sewers. And it doesn't explain this. <laughs> There's just this tile that says, can I enter? It's like, well, why can't I enter? Can I enter? Just can't enter. <laughs> and it's like, okay. But Leon is the quest trigger that activates it. You talk to the Venus first and then Leon, and then suddenly you can get inside, which is where our first set of magic are going to be. I guess, you know, when you finally want to, like, don't want to put any thought into something, you need a shortcut, just, you know, you don't need story. Just say, do not, you cannot enter. And here's the sewers. Nice, beautiful blue water in the sewers. Looks better than lava. It is, it is the cleanest sewers you've ever seen. It has hornets floating around, so I don't know. Might be infested with some monsters, but otherwise very clean. It's so clean it's infested with monsters trying to take a bath. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. And then you come and you interrupt them. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab an item here and also fight the hermit crab. This is required to get a key. The only time the entire game there's an actual door with a real lock and a key on it. This is right here. This is not the boss. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I was like, where's the hermit crab? <laughs> so this is a game where... Random encounters have priority over the bosses, so if they're on the same tile, the random encounter pops up first. Don't ask me why. It's just really confusing sometimes. So there's the key. Go ahead and grab that and head on out. Yeah, Hermit Crab Meat would also have been really nice. He's the next upgrade past Manicore. That's another tier up from what we've seen in the past. I don't know. Turtle, uh, excited turtle looks like, you know, he doesn't want to give it up. I don't know. I think there's plenty more monsters where that came from. Yeah, like many more turtle sprites. <laughs> Upgraded I mean, turtles. I mean, I want Smug Snake, Smug Snake, Happy Fish. There's like so many good ones in the I game. know. Go ahead, grab three magic here. Out of four treasure chests, the fourth one I don't pick up, monster in a box. And since this game has no levels and there are no items after grabbing the monster, there's really no point in uh, fighting those. Like maybe you've got a slight chance of getting a skill, but... You could walk four steps and also get a battle, and uh, <laughs> that'd probably be a faster way of doing it. Downstairs here, we have another three treasure chests to pick up. And if I had the teleport skill, again, one in 128 chance of that happening, you'd be done with the dungeon right at this point. Because the rest of it's just walking out through a couple of, of rooms that I don't need to grab anything from. So this would be the first time. That's why Dunus is the important one to get it on. So much magi just sitting in random places and chests. You'd think it would be an important item that, you know, gods were fighting over. I mean, I don't know why they can't find these things. They're just, like, all over the place. I can find, like, a magi every single minute here. I don't know. Maybe they're just not looking hard enough. <laughs> they're too busy standing there looking smug in their, uh, in their towers. Oh, and Apollo can't get out, so, you know, he's kind of stuck there, period. He just bricked in. So I'm just about done with the sewers here. Need to get through this next floor. There's the three out of four. <laughs> that happened a couple times throughout the run. Yeah. You know, oh, we looped around the encounter, right? What is it, like 256 steps is the encounter? It's some number of encounters before it's going to loop around again. There we go. I cut underneath the wall. There's a few areas that look <coughs> kind of like you can't pass through them, but they're actually kind of 3D-ish. And now we're going to talk to Flora here, who's been ordered to get married to Nils, the handsome-looking devil on the right-hand side by Venus, and for some reason, this causes a volcano drop down to the ground, which I call Flora and Nils' volcano of romance and engagement. Ah, uh, don't you love... love? <laughs> Something. It's just weird. <laughs> but uh, clearly that's where our next dungeon's gonna be, so we're gonna go ahead and fish the magi out of that as well. Is it gonna have as such glorious lava as a uh, water volcano? It is also gonna be lava-filled. This is a rare game which actually has two volcanoes in it. I don't know, maybe they were not just creative enough. I mean, the underbottom volcano, a little bit different than the regular volcano. Yeah, hey, there's our first ambush from these guys. So Werewolf is the one that has the surprise skill, which we can get as well. Uh, very, very fair in this game that almost everything monsters can do, you can do as well. Like, you can either turn into the monster type directly or get the equivalent skills for it. And since we don't have warning, it's like a 1 in 4 chance of us getting an unexpected attack there. 25% ambush. I, I, I say 25% <laughs> for almost anything because that's basically what the game used for most calculations. go. In addition to this wonderful volcano, we have Leon popping up there, and uh, he's trying to be stealthy. I mean, he's trying. 
Oh no, another unhappy fish in a volcano. I don't know why all the fish live in deserts and volcanoes. It's blue, it stinks its water, he can't help it. It probably is confused, but uh, even more confused is me about why Leon is following us. And uh, he's got this bad leg, but it's not slowing him down at all. He's just able to trudge right through the lava, dodge all the perilous encounters with ease. Well, you are a turtle, so you can't be going that fast. That is true, although we do have a, our super-powered robot to take care of most of these fights for us. If it wasn't for the robot, I'd be getting can't runs at this point. Hey, Leon. I wish I could run away from Leon. It'd be, be so much happier in my life. Leon's going to plague us every single floor here. He just continuously comes up and creeps around, and it's like, you have to turn around, stare him in the eye, and say, Leon, go away. We're trying to do a speed run. And then he'll finally slink away, and we can continue on. But of course, that means he's going through all this lava, too, so... Also, speaking of monsters, I don't know why this mechanical thing is called a hawk. <laughs> I've seen birds, and they don't look like that. Yeah, as the game goes on, you'll start to realize it looked like they just kind of gave up when it came to monsters' either names. They, either they <laughs> gave up or they were so creative <laughs> <laughs> that it's hard to figure it out in retrospect. I think they did a real good job overall, though. There's a lot of variety in the monsters that they kind of designed in here. Oh, yeah, look, the the monster sprites and the variety is great, but just the names start to, like, make you think, wonder, well, think or wonder. Oh, there's Smug Snake. He's the monster in the volcano that's more likely to ambush me. Werewolf outside. Smug Snake will sometimes be accompanied by a creepy doll and a bored mushroom. Hey, Leon. I sneak a few in. This is a great time. You got $25 from Avid Chaos. Can I put this donation to FFL2 Haniwa percent? <laughs> if not, I guess it can go to Runner's Choice. Thank you, Avin. So, uh, Haniwa is a hidden super boss in this game, which is way harder than the final boss. I've gotten Haniwa three times during speedruns, beaten it twice, which is really unexpected. <laughs> I was not expecting to even come close to it. And if you get really lucky, it's like a 1% chance of seeing a Haniwa and a 1% chance of it dropping this item called a Seven Sword, which is the best sword in the game. I've never gotten the Seven Sword, but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get a Haniwa here. I can't control it. Where does it appear? It's only the last floor of the entire game. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's got more HP than almost anything and regens 1,000 hit points per <sighs> round. Also got fifty dollars from Rhythm Song. Good luck on the rest of the run, Gyre. Let's hit one hundred K. Hey, thanks very much, Rhythm Song. Indeed, thank you. Chimpagno. It's a mushroom. All right, here's some wonderful <laughs> treasure chests. We we deserve this after all this Leon that we've had to put up with. Finally, a reward. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our Magi of Fire, Magi of Power. But what's this? Leon comes from behind, beats the party up, and takes the Magi and runs away. I don't know how he beats the robot up. The robot is a very powerful character here, but evidently Leon is even tougher. So we're gonna have to go after him. But uh, before that, we're gonna go you know, go to a wedding. There's a buffet, reception, open bar. You know, we need to relax a little bit after that really uh, herring volcano <laughs> and back attack and more. More surprise attacks soon, though. Soon I'm going to get the warning skill guaranteed if I haven't gotten it on my Esper already. And then the uh, surprises are done for the rest of the game. Yeah, uh, keep wishing. <laughs> Just a little bit longer. <laughs> and here we are back at... Venus's castle. Now, Venus does have a dedicated wedding chapel. It's like one-third of her castle is devoted to weddings, which makes sense. I mean, Venus got us of love and all that. But it's just kind of interesting that she has so much space for it. So we are on to the wedding chapel. And on to the reception. Now, uh, we were invited. We're not crashing this wedding. <laughs> so, uh, Even though she wanted nothing to do with no. you, you're welcome to the wedding. And this is my favorite song of the Incredible. This is the prelude, but after this is a song called Burning Blood. Oh, Flora, and The Fiend, and Leon. Just rocking out here. Also, there's a lot of dialogue. Speaking of a lot of dialogue, we have a $25 donation from Anonymous that says, Good luck, Final Fantasy Runners. That's a lot. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead, heal a little bit up. I don't think anybody else can survive a flame anyway. 
By the way, these executors are a guaranteed drop on Dunedus. That's actually coded into the game that he will always drop them. Yeah, this song is awesome. <laughs> but now it's time for boss music. So Venus here, this is where most people get stuck in the game because she just has like triple HP and half damage compared to uh, everything you've seen up to this point. Luckily, Laser Sword Willing Robot uh, usually can kill her in three Charm. rounds. So we want her to uh, just hit the front of the party. She also has flame like um, Ashura did. Robot with two laser swords can tank one flame guaranteed. Uh, with only one laser sword, then sometimes like you've got a very small chance of him dying in one shot. Uh, but we should be good now. No, oh, he missed. Ooh. All right, 500 damage with a Blitz Whip. Good hit. There's some really ridiculous ones coming up in the next world. I hope that we do get hit by one of these monsters. Just to show it off. She's getting the HP. Pretty soon she'll be at 75. And then uh, suddenly this is resolved by having, of course, Flora and uh, Leon getting married. They were in love. But uh, then it's like, hey, Nils, there's this girl outside. Why don't you get married as well? And then like a robot's like, I just got married. It's like, how are all these people getting married so quickly? But how can they get married? There's no Venus here. I mean, it's a wedding chapel. Just things happen if you go in there. And so with that... We're going to go and run away before the rest of our party gets married as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to tie it in, there might be a game at the end of this marathon to have another wedding, too. You know, between two lovely, uh, charming characters as Vivi and Quina. Well, you'll have to wait for that until tomorrow. Keep the wedding theme going. But in the meantime, let's go visit Race World. And Race World is really creative. Um... <laughs> We'll talk a little bit about the mechanics there. This is potentially the biggest RNG section of the game. And luckily, since I can save anywhere, I can make the RNG do what I want. It's just a matter of how long is it's going to take. So Race World has one gimmick, which is that there's this big racetrack section <laughs> where you can go dragon racing on there. And once you're on the racetrack, you cannot leave it. So if you have your only save on the racetrack, hope, uh, hope you can beat it or else uh, you're starting the game over from scratch. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the second fastest dragon, because the fastest dragon is a little bit too fast, crashes into walls, hey meatball, and uh, he also has an extra fixed encounter here, so we're going to start the dragon race off. Turns out I suck at dragon racing. I know, you just, oops, oops. You better get going. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch up to him eventually. And uh, someone let monsters on the racetrack too. So that, that's done intentionally to uh, get you off of the race gimmick and into a standard movement where you can just move around a little bit faster than normal. Hey, Ammonites. If they get uh, the ambush on us, we could see those big hits. So there are actually set encounters on this racetrack. There are three set encounters. I'm only going to have two because of the dragon that I picked. So at the end of this straightaway, there is a down rider. You'll see him on the right-hand side. Yeah. And the fastest dragon has an extra battle there. They forgot to give that battle the boss flag, so you can just run away from it. But uh, <laughs> it's still an extra battle that you go into. And come up, we're going to have our second fixed encounter, Lamy. I have to actually fight that one. Lamy is going to be random one to four copies of those. I think we, it's about time we start seeing some meat. What do you say? I, I hope we get some meat here, because uh, at least for the one after that, Watcher Meat is the big RNG spot. So Lamy Meat, I could go either way on, but Watcher Meat, we have to have that. Yeah, got to have Watcher Meat. That's one of the planned ones for the other monster that we haven't... Well, we haven't really given much meat to the other <laughs> monster either, <laughs> but... Flame so good. <laughs> I mean, really, robots doing all the work here. I know. Oh, we got poison resist. All right, so I should have four skills here. I can get rid of. Oops. Get rid of the uh, weakness oh. just a second. Now, uh, put your guesses in about how many tries it's gonna take. It's a one in four chance, <laughs> so uh, four would be a good guess. Obviously, one <laughs> is a great, great thing for a speed run. My record is like 25, and uh, hopefully, we don't see that here today. But uh, it's kind of fun, just kind of going through all the watchers, seeing how long it takes to get this. The entire Legend series is kind of known for RNG and spots, where a lot of the games you can kind of control it, but uh, every once in a while you'll have a section where there's really nothing you can do about it. Okay, let's go ahead and just save up here. Actually, no, let me do the skill first, just so I don't lose that. So I'm putting the ice in the bottom. That's going <laughs> yeah. to get overwritten the next time I learn a skill. Your ice weakness. And we get two, two. watchers here for our first one. That's Randomly good. one to four, just like the Lamias. Yeah, four is really difficult. And you're probably going to reset pretty quickly if he sees a four. It's faster to reset on four than it is to <laughs> fight it. You can win, usually. But uh, let's go through here and hope we get Watcher Meat. Come on, Watcher Meat. No Watcher nope. Meat. So second try Watcher, guaranteed. One. 
<laughs> See, one. I mean, one try. <laughs> Do we got Watcher Meat? No Watcher Meat. Hey, you got Charm. <laughs> yeah, Watcher is also a really high tier monster, so you get teleport on this guy. It's like, thanks. <laughs> Actually, if you get teleport, you could probably show off a glitch. I could show it off if we do get teleport here, and then I'd reset after that just to get back into the battle. There's a really interesting glitch that's uh, completely game-breaking if you teleport while riding the dragon. They didn't expect you to do that. <laughs> um, this is the only time in Final Fantasy II where you've got a vehicle. That's how they implemented it. Hey, Quake this time! <laughs> Basically, the watcher or the, the dragon is like a car. And so you get into it and drive around. And they just kind of stole some code from Legend 1, and it's a little bit broken. So they, they didn't expect it to be used anywhere else. Four. <laughs> this is definitely the one. Now that we had our four watchers out of the way, we will get this guaranteed. Watch me. Don't watch me. <laughs> Ooh. You're at 60 Magi, at least. You know, you're almost done. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Magic count very important throughout the entire game. I'm really hoping you're taking all the bad luck right now. So <laughs> oh, you I got fire this time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I assure you, Beck, we are going to donate against your robot parts. <laughs> 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 Dang. Beck's going to have a very similar thing later on uh, with robot parts that he needs to get upgrades with. And so uh, hopefully he has good luck on those. Still no watcher. Seven, me. ooh. Once it gets to double digits, that's when you're like, yeah. Something really is not happy with you. And we'll, so just go, we'll reset for the watcher, four watchers, so that does count as a try. So that's eight. See, isn't this way more fun than guessing the Ganon chest for the big key? <laughs> and it also goes up to 22 often. There we Nine go, Watcher. Try. So now we got a Watcher. And uh, Quake. <laughs> we went from uh, one of the weakest monsters in the game, which had 45 hit points, no real moves, to a Watcher, which has 614, <coughs> I believe, and some really good skills. Also, we somehow won the race because everybody else died while we were busy grinding on Watchers. Yeah. <laughs> so Quake is probably a, an actually somewhat decent ability to give her. Immunity to Quake uh, is what we got there. It wasn't the Quake spell. Oh, okay. I thought you got the Quake spell. And Immunity to Quake is only useful if you get a Haniwa. That's the only monster that oh. I think I fight that it's going to Quake me. I'm calling it. This is the time. Well, you're going to lose Quake anyways <laughs> soon. I might protect it just in case, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, just for you, Marathon, High Spirits. Marathon luck. We'll save the Quake. <laughs> she don't need flame. She's never going to use She never does any damage with it anyways. <laughs> And we're going to move on to our next new world, which is my favorite world of the game here. And uh, this world is uh, Edo, which is the old name for Tokyo. And it's got a little bit of a strange story for it. <laughs> so, uh, Banana! It was in the Japanese version of the game based on the Chinese Opium Wars, which is a real event historically that, I mean, I uh, guess Japan's somewhat near China. It's in Southeast Asia. <laughs> but... Uh, the Chinese Opium Wars were the series of battles about drug smuggling and about opium addiction and how it's destroying society. And that's a really difficult concept for an early 1990s Nintendo game. And so when they did translation to the US version, they replaced all the drug references with the word bananas. Just like in the middle of sentences, it'll say, I've been taking some bananas. And so <laughs> it's really, really strange if you go and read it about why bananas are banned in the society, and there's all these problems about bananas, and we're gonna meet Hana in a second here, the head of Banana Detective Agency. Also, my watcher has this beam skill which destroys entire monster groups. It's really good. The there bananas. Go. There you go. Here's the head of Banana Detective right there, Hana. We'll find out more about her backstory in just a second. We need to go shopping, of course, first. Wow, she's cool. I mean, wouldn't you want to be a Banana Detective? Exactly. It's like a whale biologist. You want to be a whale biologist or a banana detective? So the only key you'll ever need in the entire game. Yeah, I'd sell the extras as well. I don't really need those. Cat Claw. Cat Claw, by the way, a runner. Uh, spelled with a K for the official Cat Claw for Twitch. But uh, Cat Claw also did a lot of routing for Final Fantasy Legend 2. Um, I mostly used the Japanese routes. And then I looked at Cat Claw's notes for the translations for those for uh, some of the things that I did early on for starting my route of this game. Oh yeah, I know Cat Claw from actually doing some Dragon Warrior 2 manipulation work. A wonderful streamer overall. Now we're going to go and meet uh, Hana again in her house here. She's going to tell us the backstory about how she became a banana detective. 
Evidently, her dad, also a banana detective, brutally murdered by a banana smuggler named Echigoye, or so she claims. Yes, these guys are smuggling bananas. Is what so uh, we need to go find proof that Echigoye is the evil man bringing bananas into the town of Edo. How dare you bring fruit to our country? I mean, it's it's got to go through customs. That probably is a really <laughs> difficult thing. Look at that sword. He just... <laughs> I'm just going to kill it. <laughs> it's smiling at me really weird. Ooh, yeah. me! <laughs> oh, we, got we, some, got? we got some sword meat. So evil now, like, pie! So now I got a really evil tree here. And this guy is just walking around, flexing and screaming all the time. He reminds me exactly about a Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> just like, look at him. He's flexing and... <laughs> Always yelling and flexing. Which is great, because we need to beat up the shopkeeper right now. And so this is where we find out how the banana boat is coming into town at the South Harbor. <laughs> And so we're going to go down there, intercept the banana boat before uh, they're able to uh, hide all this uh, illicit bananas. Before they can peel out. I don't know why I invited you for commentary, my spirits. <laughs> you had to know puns were coming at the banana section. Come on. All right, here we go. Kame is the uh, kind of assistant to Hana. He's part of the banana detective. He's, like the, he's really a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. We're going to find out more about him later on. But uh, he kind of goes undercover and investigates banana smuggling incidents. So you're saying there's a whole bunch of people working on this? Yes. No, I really did invite him to do banana puns during this run. <laughs> now, this ship stuck to the brim full of bananas. All these pots and barrels probably got bananas spilling all over the place. It's just a, a terrible sight. Like, it's horrible to see the, the dangers that this is causing to society. Just this entire boat crammed full of bananas in every nook and corner. But, uh, yep, the banana we're, boats. We're a little bit lazy, so we're not going to actually do any investigation. Instead, we're just going to rob Echigoy of all his valuable treasures. So we've got a laser gun there. Somehow they stuffed an entire tank in a box. They just folded up really neatly. Gets inside the little box there. <laughs> and a pair of boots, because, you know, all these things are roughly the same size. It's about makes about as much sense as a house and a chest. Now, we go and meet up with Han and Terra, and evidently they were doing more investigation because they found out this ship is full of bananas. And uh, so, we now we can, so now we can go get Echigoy arrested. Um, we're going to go and take Hana over to the magistrate, who, of course, is in charge of prosecuting banana crimes. <laughs> and bananas are so popular, they attract all the monsters. Now, if I had teleport again, we could skip this backtracking here. This is why teleport saves incrementally a little bit of time over the course of the run. But we're about to get a guaranteed teleport skill in uh, the dungeon after this, so... There is kind of a really limited time, so by the time you're getting monsters that could regularly drop teleport, it's no longer useful for the speedrun. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thanks. All right, we made it off of the banana boat. You can tell it's a really evil place because it's got the evil, ominous music playing in the background. Uh, back on the dock here, which Kame has gone off to, I guess, his next mission. But he had no idea where some of these NPCs go sometimes. We are going down to the magistrate. It's time to go deal with the banana smugglers and dole out some punishment. I'm gonna kill the spider just for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to, I just wanted to. <laughs> All right, here's the magistrate, and hey, we found a ship full of bananas. All right, well, go arrest that evil man. <laughs> Gonna send those guards off to go and bring Echigoye into uh, justice here. And here's Kame, he was just going past him on the side there. Echigoye comes in, of course, denying all of his banana crimes. And uh, the guard's gonna go and testify for us, but what's this? Nothing like bananas were found in Echigoye's ship. Well, he must have gone really fast to hide the evidence. If only we had teleport, I know. maybe we have gotten here in time. But uh, they are hard to find, unless you've got an entire boat full of them. <laughs> Apparently, they're still hard to find, even if you have an entire boat of them. Also, somehow, Kame got flattened by the Foot Clan steamroller there, so he was just, like, totally, uh, completely crushed and uh, on the floor there. He is going to get better, and uh, this turns into a hard-boiled detective drama. It's like these evil, shadowy figures in the background controlling society. It's like, you're in over your heads. But, uh, you know, Hana's not going to give up. She's not deterred by a mere bit of trickery on the part of the magistrate, so we're going to go ahead and get some of our gear put on. I need that cat claw and our laser gun. You can go ahead and get the tank on. That was not the tank. There's the tank. And the Aegis Shield. So the Aegis Shield is going to be very useful later on. I'm putting this stuff on just so I don't forget it. It's going to be a next couple of battles where it's really important to have all your gear on. Because up to this point, um, I've been kind of breezing through a lot of the fights, but... Uh, 
I'm kind of expected to have actually done some leveling in the game. And even our super-powered robots is kind of catching up to the expected leveling curve that you'd have at this point. But you got a tree! I mean, I do have a really flexing tree. That That is a plus on my side. Well, a tree for now. <laughs> No, we'll keep the tree for a little while. I think I think he might be good for for right now. Going down into Atchikoya's rumpus room down here. That is a monster in a door. I don't quite know how this works, but you go in the door. It says, "Hey, monsters have attacked you." You get into a fight, and then you get kicked back outside. Um, it's kind of <laughs> like a monster in a box, but I guess bigger. <laughs> and what's this? The Shogun! The Shogun and the Echigoya are conspiring to smuggle bananas in, so there's now an evil man behind the evil man bringing bananas in. Also, we forgot to turn off the theme music that our robot plays at all hours of the day. It just, like, blares us out, and so they heard us coming. Um, <laughs> it's just, like, a really big oversight on my part, I'm sorry. So, uh, Shogun's gonna run away here and leave Echigoya to go fight us. Let's go ahead and get the Aegis Shield on. We're going to tank. This game's got a memory cursor. That's why I'm preparing the moves that I want to use later on. Also, Hana never has done anything useful ever in the history of my entire running. Hana did nothing. Done nothing. Anything. Thanks, Hana. She contributed to the party. And with that, it's a great taken down. But, you know, he's just a patsy. We need to go after the real evil here. Behind the evil. The behind Shogun. the evil. But, uh, you know, Hana's tapping out. She's like, you know, I'm, in, over my, I, I, I'm in too deep. And I work too hard. Uh, doing nothing made me tired me out. And uh, Terra there, though, is one of your dad's companions. And so he is going to join the party. He learned that your dad tragically died to ninjas protecting his daughter, <laughs> which I didn't mention the blow himself up and being completely useless part of it. But yeah. Taro thinks he really needs to do something solid for us. So he's going to join the party here. He's probably the first NPC you get that is not terrible. So we actually have a useful fifth party member for right well, now. you had dad. Yes, the first NPC that's not totally terrible. <laughs> well, Mr. S, he dissolved everything for you. He was really slow. Yeah, but he dissolved everything for you. <laughs> I'm just going to fight the gate guardian group here. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an encounter here, which is Knights, Ninjas, and Stone Man. The random encounter has been repurposed for this. Um, let's try to beam them. We'll Catclaw, and I'll split up Catclaw and Muramasa here, because I got only one Knight and Ninja. You'll do some slightly different strats depending on how many show up. Zero to three Knights, zero to three Ninjas, and three to five Stone Men. So depending on which groups I get, I might have uh, different setups for those. But uh, gate guardian group out of the way. Now, they used a regular encounter for that and just gave it a boss flag so that you couldn't run from it. And since it's used later on in the dungeon, very important not to just blindly run because <laughs> you can't run and they will beat you up real hard. Um, at this point in the game, they'll just like one-shot everybody in the party. Not here, though. It's up on the top two floors. <laughs> Don't have to be quite paranoid yet. We're going through Shogun's Castle, which is kind of long and twisty. Up to this point, a lot of the dungeons have been not linear, but they're small enough on each floor that you can kind of see where you're going. It kind of looks like a, these little mini towers. Each floor is kind of compact, self-contained. Go, okay, here's where I'm coming in. Here's where the stairs. Let me just walk over there. Shogun's Castle, kind of a maze. So first time you're here, you're probably hitting a lot of dead ends. There are some good treasure chests if you go off into these side rooms, but we're just kind of kind of blaze through as fast as we can. Treasure chests at the end are a little bit more important for this run. And the ones at the beginning, you can just sell for money. I think at this point you get like 18,000 or 11,000 gold for this world for the treasure chest in the, the common case. It's 18,000 for the next world. Probably a good time if you got anything, Mick. A couple things. You can always plug some stuff as well. So we got $30 from Folo Kinix. How dare these people choose good taste? Join me, my <laughs> brethren. I agree. We got $10 from Bard. My two rules for RPG Limit Break, always watch Game Boy Runs, and always watch Gyre. Two good everything rules. this year and keep up that great couch commentary too. Thank you very much. Maybe just a little bit of reminder here. We are RPG Limit Break 2017, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. Raising money on behalf of NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. This is especially poignant as May is Mental Health Month. You can always join the conversation on Twitter using hashtag Mental Health Month or hashtag Stigma Free. All right, thank you for that. If we go ahead and grab this Dragon Shield, because it's on the way. It's actually a pretty good item, but uh, we'll just sell it for money. I need a lot of cash in this route, and since I'm not killing anything, I am chronically short on money. 
go ahead and grab the samurai bow. It's nice of the Shogun to just let me go and pick up the equipment <laughs> in his room and put it on and, you know, take care of things before going and fighting him. He's easy. He's busy eating a banana. Leave him alone. He's really polite. He's also kind of, well, not very difficult, so... Look at his face. We're going to take down the evil man behind the evil man with no problems at all. Just, like, super simple fight. But what happens if there's an evil man behind the evil man behind the evil man behind the evil man? Too busy getting told riddles. <laughs> Bad banana puns, they're getting told. All right, there we go. Shogun has fallen, and uh, there is actually an evil man behind the evil man. Behind the evil man smuggling bananas. This is Magnate. He's a super evil guy. You can tell by his face. It's a great sprite overall, by the way. One of my favorite in the game. And he's big and on top of the roof. Speaking on top of the roof, you can also fight those things on the left and right-hand sides. Those are dolphins. 5,000 hit points. No real reason to do it unless you want to get some extra chances at skills. <laughs> so right. they, this is probably the first fight where he's really going to need to use Aegis. This is a good fight for it. Um, unfortunately, he used the Vulcan Cannon instead, so he just uh, shot somebody in the face. I don't know who, because I don't know what the names are for my characters. Okay, it was the Aegis Shield Wheeler, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, if we got the Aegis Shield off, we'd be immune to Ice and Thunder, two skills that he's got to use here. There's Thunder. Luckily, it's a single target, so he used that on somebody that's also already immune. The big thing, though, I want to not see is Tornado. Tornado is severe, non elemental damage to the entire party, so it's a pretty quick way to wipe on this uh, fight here. He keeps attacking someone who's immune to it. But we got him. You got lost gaze and got charm, which you just got gaze in the fight before. It's hard to keep track of what my skills are as well, because you only have four, it so cycles in and out so fast. Now, it looks <laughs> like Ahana and Terrell also getting married. I guess they were visiting Venus a little bit earlier on, but uh, we'll go on to our next new world. This is Nasty World. Yeah, we don't want to see another wedding, by the way. We're uh, done with weddings. Nasty World has only one location inside called Nasty Dungeon, and it's a pretty <laughs> nasty place. Like, they're actually <laughs> accurate here. Uh, Ten very, very big floors. The biggest dungeon in the game in terms of floor space. 36 treasure chests to go uh, clean out here. So for casual play, this is a great spot to spend like four or five hours in just going and doing the entire dungeon. But uh, for a speed run, it turns out you only need one treasure chest, so we're done. <laughs> this was one nasty dungeon. That was a nasty dungeon. <laughs> now, That's literally the name of it. When he tries to teleport there later, it says nasty dungeon. I'm not making it up. Now, at the end of that, after those 10 gigantic floors, that uh, fairy that was standing next to the treasure chest pops up again and asks, did you think the dungeon was difficult? <laughs> yes or no? And if you say no, she teleports you back to floor five, so you have to do half of it again. <laughs> But we're not going to have that problem. We're going to go on to Valhalla here, which uh, you might have seen Valhalla in a casual playthrough quite often. Because if you ever game over, then there's a dream sequence. You wake up in Valhalla, you meet Odin, the boss of this place, and says, you know what? You guys are kind of scrubs right now, but if you get stronger and come back and fight me later, I'll resurrect you so you can try this battle again. So there's a built-in retry mechanic that you can use as much as you want. No limits. It'll just restart you at the beginning of the battle. So as long as you can... Just like keep trying until you get it. Like it's a pretty easy way to kind of cheese through some of the fights. But uh, it's about a minute and a half if you ever go through that dream sequence. So I avoid doing that. That's why I actually bother saving. Otherwise, there's no real reason that you'd have to save at all. At least up until here. Once you uh, fight Odin, then the retry mechanic goes away. It's nice that they kind of have that kind of gimme in there. And then in the late game, you're kind of expected to have outgrown it. So those big giant circular orbs there floating in the air, you might think that they're actually something uh, important. Uh, they're just pillars. Yeah. It's like another just a custom background tile for a, for a wall. And uh, they use them all over the place, and I don't quite know why. They even build, in the next room, this maze out of them, <laughs> which is the easiest maze in the entire world. Like, I would feel really bad if I needed notes for this section. But uh, hopefully I don't mess it up, because I just said that. Oh, three out of four. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if I can do the maze. I'm going to take the top path. Top path is a little bit more dangerous than the bottom path. Ooh, oh, don't, ooh, good thing you didn't go right there. That could have been trouble. See, that could fool you, though, because you could go straight down and get that chest down there. But you can see the stairs from where you come in. <laughs> 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 it's like it's across and then back. <laughs> All right, we're going to go grab the flame book That's or flare book. That's going to be used for an NPC later on. You can teach humans to cast magic by buying books, and you actually get a decent number of them. Um, humans get twice as many uses out of items as other characters do. It's a nice way of balancing the fact that they're going to break. So like a, an Esper with Flare could cast it five times if she got the skill naturally, but a human with Flare Book could cast it ten times. Same thing with like swords and the robot. The robot can swing it maybe 15 times and a human could swing it 30 times. Robot swings it too hard. He does swing Such it really hard. Such a way it hard. breaks early. Luckily I've got like seven swords in my robot now, right now. <laughs> 
and some whips and some uh, laser guns and a bunch of other variety items. Probably should put some armor on him or something, but you know, just no room. Odin is tall as Apollo. Odin is very tall. He's also the most random fight in the game. He also so, has no flowing hair, though, so he's not as cool. Let's see how this one goes. About 50-50 chance of Odin for one route and 75% chance for this route, which gets Catcalla early. Slepnir and Odin Crow. Good blocks now. Uh, Gugnir pretty much one-shots things. We do have a chance of surviving Gugnir on Monster and Robot every once in a while. I don't know if we got... Uh, ooh, that's not good. Poor Pippo. I don't know if we got the Aegis Shield off. You did get it off. Okay, the first so that's going to help if we if he uses uh, some elemental attacks there. Unfortunately, he's just Gungnearing. So uh, down one on one versus Robot here. Ice this. Nope, we didn't get Aegis off. Otherwise, I'd have been immune to that. Oh, okay. I thought you got it off. Now, Cure is not bad because we do out damage him, but uh, with just the, o just the fight against the Robot, uh, unfortunately, without Aegis, that was not going to be successful. Let's go ahead and try that one again. Odin's Crow. Surprised to not see Odin Crow die to Samurai, but that's actually really rare. If we get to ease us off, though, it'll be okay. Okay. I'm happy with that start. Okay. You're gonna tank, you're gonna, I guess, beam the Crow, and we'll start cat clawing on Odin here. I would love to just do everybody on Odin, see if we can get him down, but with all three of the monsters still alive, it's a little bit dangerous for that. And speaking of danger, the Slepnir guy. There is a bug in the English translation. There's like a text trigger that's supposed to cause a fixed amount of gold to drop, 37,450. But if Slepnir meat drops because of the bug, it only gives you 330, and gold is very important for me. Uh, so we're hoping no Slepnir meat right here. No Slepnir meat. <laughs> I think we got him this time. There he goes. There you go. No slept me mean, alright. And again, that's a translation bug. So the Japanese saga too, you don't have to worry about Slepnir at all there. And he just raided like eight of his magi. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Pegasus, which is Magi, we picked up a nasty dungeon. This is teleport, and I'm gonna teleport See, to Nasty Dungeon. Not lying about it. Teleport to Valhalla, which is the dungeon I'm standing in. And the reason I do that is because after you beat the boss, there's a teleport location on the right hand side of the world. <laughs> that saves me having to walk out those last two rooms there. And unfortunately, that's the last time that teleport can be uh, usefully used in the run. It's so generous that they gave it to you at the end. It is nice to see it, at least. The answer. There we go. Done with Valhalla. On to our next world, which is incorrectly called Final World. With the incorrectly <laughs> named Final Dungeon, but the correctly named Final Town. So uh, pretty soon up, I'm going to have my last shopping trip. We need to flex a little bit more. might recognize Ice Crab from uh, Mystic Quest later on. This is uh, related a little bit. It's not real part of the Mystic Quest universe in any way, but Legend 2, Legend 3 have a development team in common with Mystic Quest. So especially Legend 3, you'll see uh, some similarity. Oh, hi, Apollo. But hey, there's this Apollo guy, and he wants the Magi now. Turns out he actually is a jerk. He was just lying. And he sixes two minions on us. Sorry, one minion. Uh, one of them disappears there. Um, <laughs> I don't, don't know why he does it, but... Uh, the other one chickened out. I'm glad the other one is gone. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> they forgot to give minion petrification resistance, by the way. So a 50-50 chance that you just instantly kill him. Now, luckily, Apollo does have a backup plan, which is kidnapping everybody in the entire universe. He's and married. <laughs> even though I don't like these people, for some reason, we're going to give him the Magi anyway. So he turned over all of the Magi. He's got all 77, and the world is doomed. Did you just I learn magic res or weapon resist again? I did, but uh, more importantly, Dad's still alive. Oh, hi, Dad. He was faking it. I don't know what's going on. He's been <laughs> running out windows pretending to blow himself up. He just doesn't want to talk with his daughter. It's kind of sad. But uh, Dad's joining the party again, and there's a secret 78th Magi, which he's been lying to us our entire lives about, telling us there's only 77, but really there's one more here in this quote-unquote final dungeon, which uh, is actually a pretty fun one. The longest dungeon in terms of floor count in the game, but they're back to the relatively compact floors. This one also has a bunch of secret passageways um, that I'll mostly be skipping. And it has great faces on the walls. It is entirely built out of Screaming Skull, which is a nice decorative touch. It, uh, it beats uh, checkerboard floors. No, it doesn't, but uh, it's number <laughs> two. Uh, karate there is another <laughs> martial arts item, so like the headbutt that we got before. Headbutt, judo, punch, karate are all part of the same line of items. 
which are um, only used in the speedrun for agility bonuses. In practice, they're very difficult to make use of because they have a large number of charges and they're weak to start with. But as you get closer and closer to zero charges remaining, they get stronger. So like a, I think punch is like 80, karate is like 40 or something like that. So you have to use them a lot before they're useful in combat. Like probably more battles than I do in the entire speedrun for like a punch. Now I don't think I need this extra money, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the Arthur Armor here just in case. I've been doing pretty good on item drops, and this is 25,000 extra gold. I would definitely get this if I got the Slepnir. In fact, I'd probably get this and one more item if I got the Slepnir meat drop. Why don't I uh, take some time to update people on future incentives? So up next we have Final Fantasy Legend 3. There are four character names still available, as well as an incentive that will continue throughout the entire run, uh, as far as what the color scheme is going to be used for that run. Bad taste. <laughs> Bad taste. After that is Mystic Quest, where um, there will be four racers, and uh, the top four names will be used for the main character. And uh, there's also a gajillion things to name for Earthbound. Now, if naming's not your thing, um, Kingdom Hearts will follow Earthbound, and there's a number of incentives there that could actually use a lot of love. So there's a lot of options for y'all out there. Um, remember, every donation that you put in, you can put towards whatever incentive you like. So keep that in mind. And speaking of a lot of love, at the top of this dungeon, there is a monster that we all know and love. And I've been looking for this guy at Limit Break for years. This is Jeff? This is the... <laughs> this is a monster that we've been kind of been hoping for. We had a chant going last year to see if we could find him, but uh, you're going to see some Warmack here. It's guaranteed for Legend 2. This is actually technically Warmack V2. There's a little two painted on his side. So look really closely at him. It's not as cool as Warmack version 1, though. I think he's still pretty good. So Yeah, version 1 was just out of control. This one is like, they actually got him to stay in place. The other one was busy in the coffee room, so you never saw him. But yeah, earlier years I did Final Fantasy 1, NES, and Famicom, and GBA, and none of them had Warmack in them, which was sad, because we were, we were really hoping for GBA to get Warmack in them, but uh, here we go. It's time for some Warmack. So this guy uh, has a lot of health, and he is pretty difficult. 10,000 health. Um, he's got the nuke bomb. He uses missile more often, which is less damage. I'm going to go ahead and put some gear on before we actually get to the Warmack oh, yeah. fight and save the game, of course. Oh, yeah. Don't want to die on Warmack. So Dad's going to need that flare book we picked up earlier. Good thing I managed to get some gear for Dad before we knew he was alive. And <laughs> okay, boots. It's going to increase his magic skill. Um, karate on our robot here. Going to replace our headbutt. And because I think we did not take any damage here, I can just go ahead and save. I don't need to heal with Dad. Okay, Warmech. So here we go, Warmech time. Okay, you need to change him. He's on Aegis Shield, which is now gone because uh, Paulo took all of our magi. So uh, I guess we can just wind him up wind up and I need dad to shoot flare him with here. a magnum <laughs> dad should outspeed Warmack here so we can get a flare off there's that missile so now that we've taken damage we're going to have uh, dad try to start healing people up so that's what his heal staff is going to be useful for okay and heal staff little powerful there's the new button we don't want to see that Ugh. not a good fight so far I mean, as long as we don't get nuked again, we should be okay. Wow. This missile, that's not bad. Now, the robot doesn't get as much healing as everybody else because healing is based on the caster's magic power plus the target's magic power. Man, you're having no luck. Uh, no luck on the nuke bombs. No luck on everything right now. <laughs> He is also weak to uh, Stone Gaze, but to now that our monster is down, yeah, we're gonna kill him with damage instead. So you're supposed to kill him a lot faster with uh, with Stone Gaze, but it just kept missing. And Easy missing every and time. Missing, it's, and it's, it's a little bit better than a 50% chance of that working. <laughs> each time, not just like total. Each time, 50%. Yeah, that was a really horrible luck. <laughs> that is why I get the early Cat Claw, buff up my robot quite a lot, so he can actually reasonably kill uh, Warmech in six rounds. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, sell off some of our gear here, get rid of all this junk we've been collecting. Get rid of Arthur's armor. I'm sure he'd miss it. Yeah, it's probably not important. Uh, laser guns. There they are. One, two, three, and four of these things. Because I like laser guns. Pew, pew. So, of course, you're going to get a laser gun. 
you're gonna get a laser gun. And another laser gun. And another laser gun, because I really like laser gun wheeling <laughs> robots. And I don't know how he carries all of them, they're just like taped to the side of him, duct taped onto the, the robot there, but uh, regardless of how we attach them, it does make him faster, each laser gun that I give him. So now he's completely full of laser guns in every possible slot. And sell off the uh, so ones without full stuff. charges. And we're going to go ahead and buy some recovery items. I have not needed recovery up to this point because I can run away from all the random encounters and the bosses, I can focus like all my energy on them. But uh, from this point on in the game, there is a, a true final dungeon, which is entirely unrunnable. So I actually have to do a whole bunch of fighting there. We're going to get lots and lots of meat. I'm starving. Like this tree is yeah. just ready to eat some meat. And uh, we'll maybe get some good <laughs> skills for uh, our Esper as well, which we have not gotten too many of. And you'll notice how Elixir was spelled. Elixir. There may have been some misspellings of the word Elixir. There's a lot of misspellings in this yeah. game. This well, is the part of the game where it really starts to seem like they uh, they didn't quite test or spell check uh, some of the names and monsters. <laughs> All right, going up here. I'm going to put on the Heart Magi before going into our next battle. The Heart Magi gives you basically an in-game resurrection for your party members, which is a really useful skill here because this is a very tough battle. Let's give Heart to Eyeball here. And it's the only Magi you have, so you might as well use it. It's also the only Magi I have. And here's this jerk again. Now, he has all the magic he took from us. So he's going to use the Aegis Shield for five rounds. He's going to use the Mazmune after that, and then start flaring us. It's kind of scripted for the turn order. And usually you can't do anything against him because you come here, and it's like, hey, I'm blocking all your stuff with the Aegis Shield. But it turns out there's a few items in the game which do do damage through the Aegis Shield. So we can get a lot of damage while he's kind of sitting there taunting us about how invulnerable he is. Tree can't do anything, unfortunately. The human <laughs> route can more easily kill Apollo because you've got two humans with laser guns. It's like 2,000 extra damage during this section makes it a lot easier to trigger his next uh, series of phases. He's got two transformations that he's going to go through and you have to get him through the third transformation as fast as possible or else he's just going to flare us to death. Um, if you had more HP like you've been grinding throughout the entire game you'd be able to tank those flares and just uh, heal up like normal but uh, our party's still pretty underpowered. It's alright, Dad will heal us and protect us. I hope so. Tree's too busy flexing to deal damage. Just about through our Aegis Shield phase here. I can I used to count out one through five for the turns, yeah. but there's actually a music cue for it. Plus there's the text, so there's three ways of telling when he's gonna to go to the mass moon. Alright, here, here it, comes. it comes. So next turn is mass moon. Literally it says here it comes, and then the music changes on that moment. <laughs> And because he's not going to use the Aegis Shield anymore, I can go ahead and try to physically attack him. Branch him. Only two uh, skill changes, though, for uh, monsters that are going to have something different. The Robot Cat Claw and then the Tree's Punch Attack. Tree's probably not going to damage him regardless. Oh, we hit Dad with the Master and Dad's kind of important yeah. in this fight. Super Saiyan, he just went. Yeah, we don't want him attacking Dad. But we don't really want to attack him at anybody, but... <laughs> I don't have a choice, because he has to Master in somebody, and then he's got a Flare here. It's guaranteed to do two Flares in a row. Come back to life with heart. We only have one use of that, so I'm gonna go back to our damage spells. Hopefully I've done enough damage here. Jeb should be okay. Should be okay hitting Jeb. Uh, and we wanna see a transformation here and not a flare. Alright, I think we're okay, good. Okay, good. Oh, my body! So, Oh, no, he just blew up our entire party. Yeah, I know. What are we going to do? We're down critical. We have no more hearts. But uh, Apollo is exploding. And uh, so this is why you need Dad plus one other party member alive to survive this. Dad will protect you from the explosions, but if Dad was the last party member, you actually game over. The only time you can't have the guest NPC be your last living party member. But, you know, no time for that. Rip, Dad. Dad has died again. This time he might not be faking the explosion. That's hard to tell. <laughs> Can't rare. tell with a mask on. Oh, he doesn't have a mask on. Rare to have somebody die by explosion twice in one game. But uh, we're going to use the power of the Magi just in case to bring him back to life here. So it's like presto, mumbo, jumbo, whatever. And summon the Magi, which is the goddess Isis. Uh, we assembled her out of 78 pieces. And you're like, hey, can you save my dad? She's like, yep, totally no problem. 
It's like, hey, can you say the universe from blowing up? Because Apollo might have turned on the self-destruct sequence. And she's like, nope, can't help you there. Nope. So uh, we're going to have to go to the center of the universe and turn this thing off. Now, Isis does travel with us, and she's a really good guest NPC. But everything here is unrunnable. So uh, good luck part. for the encounters. See, the encounters aren't difficult because he's pretty much going to blow them all up with Isis, which is the whole reason why he got the elixirs. But now the fun part is, what kind of skills and meat will we get out of all these encounters? Because a lot of the time they get they, they drop a lot of stuff. I have to read over my party because every time yep. you have the touching scene with Dad, uh, the main character does get promoted to the front of the group. That's why the Esper has been appeared back there a couple times. Yeah, we need the uh, monster in front so we can see what it gets turned into. It's more fun that way. I don't technically <laughs> need the monster in front. <laughs> Oh, you lost when your weapon protects for fire weakness. <laughs> I've learned how to be weak to fire. Great. Well, there's plenty of monsters here. And I do have to be very careful because if we run out of flares, it gets very bad. So I'm going to count down there. So we have two flares left. Oh, hey, Stone Gaze. Stone Gaze. Out of <laughs> which she will never hit with because you have to have a really high magic staff for it to work. Still no meat. Wow. I mean, I hope we get a good monster at the end. I do have a guaranteed monster. Madam Butterfly is going to be our upgrade from our Watcher. But the other monster, I have no idea what I'm going to end up with. Um, I got a couple of ones that I like. That was my last flare, by the way. Ooh, we lost Stone Gaze to get Stone Protect. <laughs> really quickly into that menu, you can get a battle as soon as six frames after that last encounter. So, uh... Very, very important to menu quickly. Um, that's because you're forcefully pushed forward, even if you're not holding D-pad down. And it could be like on the very next tile where encounter occurs. <laughs> Lost stone, gonna get gaze. Wait, you went from stone gaze to stone to gaze. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of these. <laughs> that's why I'm here, to keep track for you. <laughs> Come on, we need some meat here. Yeah, this is a, a truly worrying of lack of meat throughout so the entire game. In is fact. this auto scroller or are you holding down? I'm holding down and an auto scroller, which means I go twice as fast on it. So anytime that you're seeing me on staircases, it is an auto scroller pushing me downward. But if you hold down at the same time, hey, Boom! What do we so get? Let's see what, what do we get? get? We get a Scylla. So now we've got a uh, Medusa thing. Yep. <laughs> I mean, anything's a big upgrade from what you had before, so it's nice getting at least that first bit of meat in there. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Pudding. Pudding sounds like something good to get. Pudding is delicious. I could go for some pudding right now. I know. Let's get some pudding meat. Didn't get any pudding. Come no, on. No pudding meat. I mean, we need some dessert. Yeah, we just had meat. We need dessert. Oh, yeah. Mad Cedar. C-E-D-E-R. There's a lot of really questionable monster names in this entire dungeon. <laughs> My favorite's the Demo Load. It's supposed to be oh, Demon yeah. Lord. Demo Load, yeah. And I can understand shorting Demon to Demo because there's not enough characters, but Load instead of Lord because those are not even close on the keyboard. Go ahead, save up for our first mini boss, Tian Lung. One to four random copies. We get one, which is nice. Yep, and he's going to get meat from Tian Lung. Yeah, there's a guaranteed meat drop. Not like Watcher, 100% chance of meat's happening here. And I just need the Watcher to be alive in order for him to eat it. So there's Tian Lung Meat, and we now have Madam Butterfly. I like Madam Butterfly, Butterfly because she can drain, which is a great move, and she can also heal other people in combat, which I'll be using for a lot of the uh, late game bosses. Well, the last boss. Four heads. By the way, four heads is what Scylla got. That's an attack. Not questioning it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, where's all this meat drop? Come on. Yeah, usually it's a meat like every single fight. Six seven is the name of that monster. The robots are actually pretty good because they drop an item called Selfix. It's pretty rare. Uh, G seven type. G seven, sorry. Um, oh, evil eye. Uh, let's see what we get. We get a D turtle. D -turtle. Back to back to uh, board turtle. turtle. One more flare left after this. Yeah, um, it's a whole lot of encounters. <laughs> or you get lucky and only get. It. A little bit of a whole lot of a counter. There's a couple minutes of RNG swing depending Ooh, on what encounters you get. And now we Mordor. have Motor, which is actually a sword. Yeah, uh, it's a sword. <laughs> I want a zombie or a skeleton, ideally. So Motor, you always think it's going to be a zombie. But uh, it's, yeah. it's a sword. And then Gloom, you think it's going to be like a ghost or something. It's a butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> this is the part of the game where I think they just gave up with names. and uh, A king some, crab. Got some crab meat. And we Spector. got a Spector. So that's not the one I want. That's the ghost. 
This so, is the lower level ghost. Well, the ghost is actually the higher tier monster. There's three monsters in this family. Oh, okay. Um, skeleton, zombie, and ghost. And ghost is the one that does not transform to the uh, monster I want. Okay. The two lower tier ones would have been good. The really complicated meat fusion thing. That, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the best way to explain it is to go read the internet FAQ for how meat works. <laughs> Otherwise, you're pretty much just kind of experimenting with how, uh, yeah. what you get, whether it's going to be something better or worse than your current monster type. Iron Man. He is flexing pretty good there. We are Iron Man. All right, Slepnir is going to go ahead and have you guys target Slepnir because it's likely to live through the uh, flare here. So There's a couple monsters meat. that uh, do have enough HP to survive flare, so I just go and have to manually target them. Otherwise, I try to just do an uh, auto cursor through there. Gunfish, by the way. It's a pretty good fish. I would like a gunfish. Just to, like, show him off. He's happy. One more flare left after this. Alright, why don't we sneak one in here? Because it's a good one. It's from my... My main man, Kobahi, 150 bucks. Kobahi. What a god. All right. Good luck with the end of the run, Gyre. Big have fun with robot parts. And hopefully floor six for all the MQ runners. That's definitely going to happen. Floor two, everybody. You want no, floor two. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. By the way, that was a Scylla and a Moaner, so you just saw what the last two monsters we were. <laughs> I'm going to make it down to Fenrir here, which is our next boss. I just used the elixir, but I've got plenty of extras, so no worries about running out. One Fenrir, let's go ahead and do this. This one's a lot harder than um, the Tin Lung battle because he's got five or more hit points, he regens 10% per round, and he just loves to cast Tornado every single time. <laughs> or dies right away. So Fenrir now we have a Giga Giga Worm. Worm. I have no idea what Giga Worm does. <laughs> <laughs> he's got teleport. He's got teleport. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. <laughs> We'll keep oh, the yeah, we'll we keep gotta get the, we gotta get, well, you know who. We'll keep the Giga Worm. He's fun. Are we gonna get the encounter? Um, we might. I don't know. Like, I have no idea where we are in the encounter cycle, so <laughs> anything could happen here. This is the last floor of the game. We're heading up to the final boss section. This is kind of like the Crystal Area in Final Fantasy IV. It reminds me very strongly of that walk. How do you, uh... Just lots of crystals, lots of really awesome music, and uh, every Ooh, once in a while you get jumped by some really nasty monsters. Oh, you didn't take the cicada meat? I'm just leaving the meat on the ground at this point. We're, we got Giga Worm here. Everybody oh. wants Giga Worm. I heard him standing in the back. <laughs> what if you get pudding here? <laughs> I mean, I could go for some pudding, but I really wanted Slime Guide if I could get him. It's my favorite of the monster types that I can easily get from the thin rear section. For yeah. it, but, uh, at this floor, any meat drop could be the last one you get. So you don't want to be stuck with a monster that only has like one or two uh, spell casts. Yeah. And I like that he's got both fire and tornado for the last boss. In fact, I should be tornadoing during this section as well. That wouldn't have to even bother targeting. <laughs> well, Giga Worm has tornado. It's time to smash. Time for some smashing. We go ahead and heal up the party. Put our Esper in the front slot. I don't know what Cursed actually has an impact for this fight, <laughs> but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and heal her up. If you had Flexing Tree, you could have Hulk smashed this thing. Listen to Burden Blood a little bit longer. Burden Blood is the background theme for the entire Final Dungeon, by the way. Just you don't get to hear very much of it usually. And here yeah. we go, Final Boss time. Arsenal. So Arsenal is tough. Um, let's go start with the fires. So he has four cannons around him right now, and that's the first phase is to get rid of the four cannons. They do a lot of damage, and our Esper has like 180 hit points. Possibly the weakest Esper I've ever had in a run. Um, I don't know if I just got really unlucky with the HP ups, or we just didn't get very many good encounters for it. But yeah, every uh, every time he does enough damage, he'll kill one, and it does less damage to the party when he does kill one. So we have to break all four of them before he next goes, or else Esper dies here. So until he starts smashing. Goodbye to our main character. <laughs> Pippo, you you served us well. There's three cannons down. So once the cannons are dead, he'll do start doing something called the small. Well, we call it the small smasher. Yeah, small smasher is not too bad. There's two attacks, both called smasher. Small smasher, not bad. Big smasher, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. So let's go ahead, uh, heal up robot they, first. 
Big Smasher has a huge damage range from, not, was it 90? 90 to 639 at random. Yep. Uh, no way to dodge it or block it or reduce it in any way. So you just have to hope we don't get two big ones in a row is the big thing. There's Small Smasher. You'll know the Big Smasher because he'll open up and fire it <laughs> from his uh, from the doors. Big Smasher is going to be where uh, things get real in this fight. And I think we're going to get Big Smasher this round. So we go yep. Big Smasher time. You can Big tell the music changes as well. So that's what we get. See, damage rolls. 261, not bad. 25, not bad. 351. Good. Yay. Good damage rolls. Average-ish. Good damage rolls. We just don't want him to double turn here. We don't want Madam Butterfly to miss. And uh, ideally, we get another uh, Cackle sure. in here. We need a good roll for... Robot to survive, it's not guaranteed at this okay, point. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, that's good. So nice. We got a nice. But uh, we're below the max. So 639, that important number to look at here. So everybody could get wiped right now. Yeah, okay. You're dead. Uh, uh, you lived. Uh, uh, so Mana Butterfly got, cannot yep. miss. I think she's got like one hit point. Okay. So come she's on, Mana alive. Butterfly. She's still alive. She's got seven more than the max damage. Yeah, so she can't die here. Max Ooh, damage. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. Arsenal falls. <laughs> six hit points to spare. That's not the time yet. Yep. We have uh, one more cutscene to go, but six HP to spare, so <laughs> no problems at all. Just enough. If only you would have eaten that f that meat at the end, you might have had a better worm. Right on. Well. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and talk to Isis here, and then congratulations for saving the universe. She says, get out of my dungeon. And it's <laughs> like, well, we're going to talk to you later, of course. You can come visit. And she's like, no. I'm going to sleep <laughs> for a thousand years. Good night. So uh, we leave, and uh, sadly saying goodbye to our wonderful Burning Blood music, wonderful Crystal Area. And uh, there is a small reward, though, because at the top of the stairs here, going up our elevator, we get to be reunited at last with somebody near and dear to our hearts. Let's, of course, reunite it with Dad. That is time. <laughs> and that, that's time. Final Fantasy Legend 2. Time yep. can stop at any point. There we go. <laughs> 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 Hope you guys enjoyed the show. It's a really fun game overall. Um, pretty easy to pick up. You can get about a two and a half hour run very quickly in there. Under two hours is where it starts getting challenging. And then uh, once you want to start going for the world record attempts, it's just like, the RNG you saw, the can't runs, the watch your meat drops, the, uh, the late game bosses, everything has to go perfect. And that's what might makes it really tough overall, which I think we're going to see another variant of that coming up real soon now. Robot parts! <laughs> so uh, Mr. Big Fung Balls for Final Fantasy Legend 3 is up next. He has been doing some great hosting for me. I want to thank him directly. There. I want to thank High Spirits. Thank, thank, thank everybody. Brought all their bananas. I didn't turn around, so I didn't see any bananas back there. I but. I'm sure there's nothing <laughs> illicit about those bananas that you saw on screen today. Before you run off, though, I want to let you know there was a $200 donation from Chris V, and it's to your choice. I think we need some more Jeffs. So uh, if you've got other characters you need to name Jeff, I would love to name everybody in your party Jeff if I could. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> could probably make that happen. Oh, no bad taste? I assume we're going to need to run ads and stuff, so just hang tight, y'all. All right, and with that, thank you, everybody. Good job. There we go. Oop, waiting. We are RPG Limit Break 2017. Uh, stick around, uh, we'll be back after these announcements. <laughs>